Right, this is going to be another episode of Snake and Banter. This is not the traditional Snake and Banter. Like, first of all, Londres is obviously our guest, and he is a return guest. He was on an episode previously. But what we're going to do is, because the mage is coming up, we're going to do a special one-off using the Snake and Banter brand, because it's basically me and Mary Snake plus guest Londres in this case. But instead of doing the traditional format of good, bad, and ugly, what we thought we'd do is, since it is the last ever CSGO major, we're going to be in CS2 after that, and obviously the next major actually isn't until next year, basically, when they're doing the PG one, what we thought we'd do is, instead of just the usual thing of like, here's the storylines headed into the major, well actually this major somewhat is the end, isn't it? So it's like, actually these are the last storylines we'll really have at the highest level of the game. So what I thought we'd do I had the discussion with Lawrence about this is we'll just basically generate a bunch of the storylines. Some of them will be obvious ones like spoiler, almost certainly they'll be like Sybil versus A, all that jazz the classic ones, but we'll also have some obscure ones and we thought just, essentially we'll discuss them slash argue them, plus we'll see who's like, I'm sure some people have got some mad delusional Homer takes or some or some ridiculous like fucking boomer shit of like art. Oh, Dupree has made all the mates. Yeah, as the worst player. Brilliant story. Yeah, nice one. <laughs> cool. Brilliant. I guess simple should just wait at the very end and then just fucking pick up the underwear of some good player and get all made just 98. Sorry. I'm still playing. Who cares? So anyway, that's a little taste of what will happen if anyone tries to bring in that bullshit on this show. So, Londres, welcome. So what we'll do is this. Since you're the guest... We don't have to literally generate the whole thing, but do you have like an initial narrative or storyline you want to start with? Is the one that like pisses you off or you think is really good? Um, honestly, everything sounds pretty good for this major. The only thing I'm really worried about in general sense is like, do our favorite teams make it to playoffs? That's the thing yes. I'm just most worried about, but I kind of want to get that out of the way. Like, I don't want to really talk about like Monty and Nine's odds of making it into playoffs because it just kind of makes me mad to think about it. As much as like, I don't feel bad that FaZe lost to BNE, I still wish they had won the match. So I don't really know how to fr like characterize that in my head. When it comes to like who I think my grand finalists will be, maybe I could, we could throw those out there. Um, on its face, I think mine are Heroic and G2 with- Ooh, all right, fuck Yeah, no, so okay. mine are Heroic and G2 with a semifinals of Navi and FaZe with, with quarters, you know, Vitality, um, Vitality, Ents, I guess would be the only other, or Vitality, Ents, yeah, Liquid, ends. yeah, Liquid, One more. and, fuck, I had a team for this. Furia maybe for you? They they made quarters <laughs> last two majors. Yeah, no, I'm like not that. saying it's reasonable, Lord. I just know your brain, so I'm just giving you a chance. Like, Furia uh, actually, maybe actually, on that actually, one. No, no, no. I'm Who else could it be? Here, I had nine making play. Oh, nine. Oh, okay, nine. nine. Yeah, yeah so how sorry. silly I was I to imagine <laughs> Furia would be in the World Championship quarterfinals. Yeah, how ridiculous <laughs> yeah. I am. Let's go nine. Okay. <laughs> I All right, start because, there then. Let's yeah. rewind it then. Let's do your final then. So you have Heroic versus G2 is who you have as the final. Right? Yeah, yeah. Listen, the Heroic one, I don't know that there's that much explanation. I'm going to guess almost everyone thinks they're number one slash the most consistent team. Like, looks like they almost are on to make every semi of fan. The question I have is the G2 side. Like, actually, I feel like a lot of people have bailed on G2 now on is like, as much as everyone was laughing at Richard and saying he was wrong, the yeah. second that they stopped winning, they really stopped winning a lot of people. And no, no one even brings their name up anymore. No one even, I didn't even hear anyone cry that they didn't make, like they weren't, people, they weren't even at I am Rio. No one mentioned it. Nobody, mm -hmm. nobody mentioned it. So why why G2? Why, why are you picking them for the major final here, Londres? It, it, it's all probabilistic right now. So I guess for like the really kind of latent fans at NCS that are just kind of figuring out what's going on at the moment, like the number one ranked team in the world hasn't mattered for almost 10 months at this point, since probably since, phase at Antwerp, you know, almost a whole year. Yeah, true. So when we talk about like the last six months, for example, I think the two best teams are Heroic and then G2 because we have G2 who won the world final into winning Cato, Heroic winning a final and then getting three oh, second fair. place finishes. Yeah. So overall massive consistency. And then we haven't seen anybody win two tournaments in a row for what's that, what that's worth. So, you know, Vitality winning Rio doesn't mean that much to me even though it's huge to have confidence off a big win, as everyone likes to say. Um, and then Navi are consistently third, fourth. Um, and FaZe, they literally didn't qualify to Rio. They, since Antwerp, have been, like, so shaky. They finally got the Grand Slam, but it wasn't, like, how Liquid got their Grand Slam within, like, five months. They took forever to finish that off. And then as soon as they got it, it seemed like they were completely out of gas. So I'm kind of scared for them in Challenger stage, even though it seems crazy to bet against uh, someone like FaZe. So uh, G2, they have... The one player, in my opinion, who wants this major maybe more than anyone else besides, let's say, like Apex or Zywoo, which is Nico. Like, that's my one big argument. This is Nico's last chance to win a CSGO major. And if, you know, deserving is one of the most dumb words that we could use to describe, like, 
what someone's odds are of actually winning yeah, of something. But if there's anybody who's going to wake up every single day until this major begins and can like see that trophy in his mind, it's probably going to be Nico, who thinks in some way that this is his destiny to be able to do this. So I, I'm, I would put a bet on Nico for that reason. And uh, G2 were the closest team to being uh, a number one team or even or having some kind of era between that world final into break into yeah, Katowice moment where they had the map streaks actually even better map streaks than FaZe had during their almost yeah, era of course. you know course, yeah very yeah. close to Astralis's map streaks actually which was pretty insane and it sort of just went under the radar because it got good so fast yeah. um the one problem with G2 and the reason that they fell off so much is go look at Hooksy's stats again like Richard is talking about he has completely receded to the mean he's regularly getting eight kills a game and that just shits on how good he actually is as a caller because honestly I think he has proved that he's pretty damn good by the way, just as an aside, on this episode, another thing that'll be slightly different from the other ones is, like, notice Launders started there with, like, how likely it was and why he explained, like, why the teams, you know, in a simulation would get there. But the other angle we can also do, so we're going to do that because we're all analysts, obviously, but the other angle is, to be fair, for this one, since it's the last major, just narratively, I think you can also pick just storylines you would like to happen. You don't actually have to think they're, they're like, likely as we do it, just to keep, like, it a bit wide open in that one. Because, like, That's I don't fair. disagree with his take there, Maui, on the idea, like, Heroic and G2 could be the two teams. Essentially, Heroic versus is almost anyone in the top five is probably a good shout. Like, I don't know if I would pick that as the one I want to happen, though. That's the difference, you know. Like, if I actually want it, the problem I have with that one is this, is... This is, I guess we can keep, keep analysing his take because I'll just say this on the other side of it like I don't it's not that I don't think G2 could be there I just think they're, they're, they live and die on the fucking firepower so if the firepower's there they can make it there my problem is the heroic side like I can't lie I was out on heroic even before this final guys like even I even said this when we did the watch party I said look on paper they are the favourite but I'm not fucking picking them I'll take vitality because heroic has that fucking aspect now where people don't get this like it's one thing if you lose, but it's like a specific opponent or, you know, it's like a map in the draw. So they can just lose to anyone because they lose mm -hmm. to themselves. They really do have that problem that certain teams have in history. So the downside is essentially I wouldn't choose them to be in the final because I don't think they can win it. That's the problem. If I really thought like, you know, it's like a true heavyweight match, whoever wins this, like props, like, Oh, if essentially the joke is, Lord, is if fucking KD and Nico play in a major final, it's like, well, I guess one of you is going to win. You know what? I yeah, don't want it yeah. to be like that. I want it to be the other way around, like simple as Nico. Like, come on, guys. Like, who's going to win this thing? Like, I don't want it to be like, well, someone has to win. So now we can't both lose, can we? Like, that, in a way, that's back to me. So come on, Maui. Where are you at on the heroic G2 angle? Well, for heroic, I, I would just say that if you gave me even odds to bet on anybody making the playoffs or even top four, I would take heroic in a heartbeat. They've just been the most consistent team thus far in tier one CS. And we see that it's they also seem to be pretty good in Swiss systems, have you noticed? Like they, they, they it's the only team I've seen they never yes. seem to struggle in these. They actually seem be very good against like the rest of the field. Yeah. Their their style is always so active. So they're not a team that has to react to what everybody else is doing. It's usually heroic that's taking up the onus and making sure that they're exerting pressure onto their opponents, even if it's an underdog, because that's why I think FaZe are honestly pretty bad in Swiss systems, because they just kind of relax a lot of the time their discipline really falls apart in a lot of games that when they play against the best teams in the world they know that opposing team's playbook pretty well but when face is playing up against something like nine then they don't really know these kind of plays and they don't necessarily they can't necessarily draw off of their experience which they so frequently do and so that's why i also i mean we'll get to nine later for an underdog run but i also just think that heroic heroic style is so foolproof in terms of just making it deep consistently because their player quality is probably actually in some ways the lowest of teams that i would consider in the top five right now but their style and calling is probably the best what's and sad they, is in a way by the way i also do think even though i don't believe they can win if I actually could pick a storyline, here's what people don't know, Launders. Even though, like, the romantic part of me would pick Nico or, like, you know, Carrigan gets two or Simple mm -hmm. gets two, like, that's, like, quite a cool storyline. Actually, if I just think of the fact it's the end of CS Go, though, I also think, in a way, it would be cool if Farouk did win because I actually think they've played the best Counter Strike over the last, like, what? At this point in time, probably like, nine months, a year or something. Like, like if you thought, like, about he's saying, just from the beginning of tournaments till the end of tournaments, like, match after match after match, who's played more consistently good Counter Strike than Heroic? Like, by the way, their map pool's been amazing the whole way through. Like, and they've done it all. This is the key thing to me. They've done it all without anyone close to, like, the god tier player. Like, as much mm -hmm. as people talk about Stown is good, no one's comparing him to fucking Simple and Zewu. Like, no, we're not having those combos, so it just shows that, like, essentially, if you were to say to people at the end of CSGO, it was won by this team, and they were like, oh, shall I watch the demos? He'd be like, yeah, that is actually how it CSGO ended. That was the top level of what you could do in the game CSGO. Like, it would yeah. almost be, like, narratively fitting if they won.
Yeah, the other thing I guess it's like likable about heroic is the fact that like they, okay. they we like disagree probably, on this one, but go on. <laughs> uh, the, the one that the one thing that can make them likable in the past, like in decisions they made. Okay, number one, it's like okay, like Cadian was like one of the most hated personalities for sure. If you still hate him because of like who he was or whatever, I get that. But um, as like you know, in a motive IGL who has by reviews of other teams been you know looked at like chopper called him his favorite igl like a lot of people oh, okay. are looking at him finally as his as like one of the best captains right now i think he's done a great job of actually being both a very very good igl and honestly i mean i, I don't know if people consider him overrated as a player i feel like he's not that good as a player like he's very very up and down so he can be very good but this the, the team that he's put together you know they they pr kind of all have a brand because of Katie and I would say. And then, you know, even though Stown is the carry of the team, he's he's sort of like a fake shock. Like he is a little bit inconsistent. He's not like there in all the finals and things like that as much as I love Stown. Um and then the other thing is that they made this very brave roster move in uh refresh to Yabby, which I thought at the time was going to be the difference. I think that would have been the difference between Astralis being at this fucking major or heroic. Uh no, heroic I think would have made it either way. But Astralis getting in. The, when Copenhagen Flames started to l lose all their players and everybody went to all these top teams, Yabby was the one that was open for Astralis to take at that time. And Heroic dropped Refresh, who was better than most of Astralis, to take a chance on Yabby. And they prospered because of it. He's actually their best player this year. He's probably the most improved player of 2023. So that's that's a brave move that Heroic make. I think makes him a lot more likable. And so for me, they kind of continue on this like uptrend of uh, me wanting to cheer for them even though i think the last time we talked i was very off on heroic i thought they were frauds i thought they were going to never win that final and then when they got to rio finals they actually won a, a final i think i still have i'm still like liking them a lot okay for the yeah, I mean, I think that wraps up a lot of... Well, okay, I mean, the, the the big elephant in the room here with Heroic is just that in the legacy of this team, it's impossible to ignore the cheating scandal that happened with them. And I, I think that's where it's really hard for me to honestly still like them, like, deep in my heart. Like, I know Tessus boosted Hunden to get a, an unfair advantage. Like, despite what they say about that, you're not boosting a guy who's suddenly connecting to Spectate. Like, all the evidence was there that he did that. And so, like, that's still in the back of my mind all the time when I think about Heroic. And despite the journey that Kadian was on and everything like that, they were cheating. They, oh, so, by like, the way, not... just as an aside, because this will help your point, actually. Obviously, the only one with the fucking balls to actually say it publicly is Nico. But spoiler, he ain't the only one. This actually has the vibes. Like, Londoners might know this the story. This has the vibes of the fucking Olaf boost thing, where, like, all the fucking pro players hated Fnatic for that shit. Like, it mm. was just the vibe. Everyone was on the, like, fuck Fnatic tip. So if you don't know, behind the scenes, look... It's not like all the pros are as bad as like Reddit people, but pretty swear Maui, a lot of pros think like they did have some involvement or they did know it. Or, and what they do now is because KD yeah. and Heroic have just gotten really popular, they just don't say it, mate. They know it's just like you just lose yeah. with fans if you say it. So that's why they're doing that thing now where they all pretend like, oh, no, they're great. he's a great guy, even if they fucking secretly hate him. So like some of that is real. Like not, pretty swear pros haven't I, forgotten that shit, mate. I they did. I did. I remember, I remember at Antwerp, I walked into an elevator three different times. KD was in there and he had just gotten into a fight with like another player. Like it go. was like, there was someone who was talking shit about him. He was talking shit about them. They hit him for other reasons on top of, oh, like, of course, you, know, yeah. you know, like it was like during he, oh, I think it was Navi. They were talking about how he like after every round in a scrim in the prac room, he'd be yelling, you know, at the top of his lungs as if it was a grand finals. So they hated him because of that. They couldn't even like practice in peace. There's just like reasons on reasons. But that's also kind of what like made me like Cadian a little bit. I, I think that just outside of obviously, you know, the allegations is the Cadian as a guy who, He's sort of like the leffen of of the scene okay. right now where like he's he's good enough that you can respect him on that merit um and, but there's all of these other things that are piling up and enough enemies that sort of like you know you actually are invested in the teams he plays against whether or not you like him just because you either want Cadian to lose uh or the other team to win that's sort of true by the way that right. dynamic definitely does exist because let's be real as well it's not even the rest of heroic the rest of rock about the most likable quiet people you ever meet the problem is it's just candy and he just he does just overpower the team doesn't even his personality it's true
I wonder. I want the whoever whoever is is Nico going to be the hacks. Then he's gonna he's gonna bring up all the evidence <laughs> anti the anti Cadian. This is going deep into the melee. Right, let's do the pivot yeah, then because here's what we'll do. Yeah. Essentially, the topic we were on here was sort of like what would the best finals matchup be or what will the finals matchup be? Right, that is one certainly. Another one for me. I actually think a really cool one because it's absolutely possible would be somehow if for the last major ever fucking Nico and Carrigan have to face off. Yeah. Yeah. And not yeah. only that, it's even more delicious than I ever could imagine. Because in this scenario, Carrigan already has a major. Yeah. So no matter what, he can't essentially totally lose. But if he wins two already, that's so insane if you need court. And then secondly, the idea he won it like while you're on the other side. Like, even though they all claim, you know, there's no beef now. They're all shaking hands and there's many more. That has to burn you inside. Like, that would just bother you. Like, that's the sort of shit where, like, the joke is if you're fucking Nico, like... Like the day after you lose that final, you have one of those dreams where you wake up in a cold sweat, like, oh, oh, my God, I thought I thought I played in the final. You roll over like, oh, my God, I did. It was, it was less than it. It's like a double fucking, you know, like in the movie, the double fucking scare from the dream within a dream. Like, oh, it was the final. Oh, shit, my whole career, last CS one ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that would be a pretty bad because obviously G two phase could one, be yeah. the final, right? Could be. I, I was just thinking. So, okay, this is why I wanted to do the show with you, right? both of you, on. honestly, because so Kerrigan. His last memory before the final he won was 2018, right? Was that right? That was the last grand final for a major he was in? Yes. Yeah. He's only ever been in one uh, at that point. Yeah. yeah. So that was like, you know, round 29 in Inferno. Like, oh my God, they're actually running out of time. Like, clearly they're choking as an IGL, yeah. they're choking into him getting. I remember in Antwerp, it was like Inferno. The R trap was coming. He gets this 3K that you would never expect from Kerrigan to be able to do as an individual in that yeah. moment into now Nico's last memory at Stockholm in that, you know, that Deagle moment in yep. heaven right before yeah. map three is his last memory. And now he goes up into the final against Kerrigan, who just conquered his demons, who now has the pressure off and Nico has the most pressure ever and knows he has no more chances. That's pretty good. Do you know what's sad, by the way, is this is just where, like, it's not even actually related to Nico. Like, obviously, I have a minor beef with Nico, but I do think he's a brilliant player. I just thought it was funny, and in a fucked up way, I actually liked when he missed the Deagle shot, and here's why. Because I've always thought De his Deagle does look like cheating. Like, he never misses. He always goes right in the center of the cross, as though it had no recoil. So, like, that, I like the fact that one time it did just miss. <laughs> he just tried aiming and it missed. Like, yeah. yeah. Fucking welcome to the rest of our lives. You, everyone else can't just do a 4K every time they want. You fucking can't. It, but, I mean, with the, the whole <laughs> narrative angle of that is that that whole phase team when they lost in boston were all labeled as chokers and we're kind of seeing both of them rise from the ashes in their own separate ways where nico goes on to play with g2 wins a katavica and kerrigan i think he's more more or less shed the choker narrative i mean phase was the most clutch team of the previous year yeah. so there's no way you could even say that anymore and yet we have seen nico once again on a huge stage choking like that so i mean i feel like the nerves in that game are just going to be absolutely insane like mm -hmm. the calls might get bad for both teams the the shots might just get messy and personally i kind of want a game that's a little bit messier for the grand finals because I don't know like like it's it's great to see in those sort of moments that these people are human and that everything isn't just an insta kill in like half a second so um the the play will degrade but that's always like why we like land counter-strike at the end of the day more than just watching online cs where everybody's playing in their bedroom at like max vol or just you know max ability mm -hmm. And then being as obviously this is the most wide up major in terms of what the semis and the final could be because you have like, I mean, the joke is Cloud9 didn't make it, but if Cloud9 had been there, there'd be like fucking seven teams could make like the semis or something it'd be ridiculous. But even without them, obviously there's a world where you absolutely could have the Simple vs. Zemu in the final. You could have Na'Vi against Vitality. These are two teams that could make the final. I will say the only downside of that one is one on the Na'Vi side, like the, what has tilted me so much ever since they won the blast with SDY is Na'Vi only looks fucking bad and so you go right i'm finally going to be out on them now fuck them and that's when they do like the quarter in the semi run you're like oh maybe they're back because like simple actually does play well again now but then at the same time if you ever think like at this last tournament now like well they should now be able to win the tournament like then they'll just shit their bed again so i do feel like navi's probably one of the hardest teams to actually have faith to predict they'll go far but if they do let's be real they do have simple they do have some amazing players that would be a banger obviously zemu's never done anything in the playoffs of majors because for whatever reason all his vitality teams just sort of flunk the majors who knows why 
why? Not really any reason. They have loads of veterans. So I don't even blame totally him. I pointed out on Twitter, like obviously his stats do go way down in the main portion of majors. I'll just add the caveat for people who don't get it. I'm comparing him to Simple, the most goated player ever who has the godlike stats. Understand, every other star player also goes down at the majors. And actually his level, I think he'd average like a 1.17 rating or some over like a That's pretty good still, guys. Like, spoiler, that's probably better than like Sharks, fucking a lot of great players that you're thinking have won majors. Like, so it's not that Zeru shit, but the key thing for me is it's obviously Dark Horse, these two teams would both be in the foul, but it'd be a fucking sick way to end the game on the like individual player angle. And by the way, even though it wouldn't change it, obviously it'd get mad spicy if somehow Zebu won that one, wouldn't it? Right against Simple in the final. That would be like yeah. the dream, basically. Because if people don't know, that's one of the downsides of team sports. Because you're trying to make an individual rivalry in a team game, it's not actually that often they're going to meet, etc. Like if people don't know, like that's my, people might not actually know this. Like Messi and Ronaldo never played in like a European Champions League final. They were in, they won loads of them, by the way, but they just never played in the final. It's just it's never happened. So, or maybe there was one. I think it was maybe one like when like Ronaldo at Man United or something. But like, they actually don't have the face-offs often as you want. So in a way, that would be cool. Imagine them two in the final. That would be so hype, wouldn't it? And by the way, it'd be in France for fuck's sake. Imagine yeah, that. That would be insane, wouldn't it? That's true. Yeah, I want Vitality to be there just for like the atmosphere. We'll be hype as fuck, crazy. I guarantee. Yeah. Uh, and like Apex. So you already get emotions from him in like a group stage. Like imagine like in front of this crowd. But the only problem for me is just like, you know that that, that meme, it's like the SWAT team and then it's like the clown snuck in the middle. Like NPL in playoffs, I feel like it's just going to be such a liability for Navi. I feel like he's going to crumple up like a piece of paper and I just don't want to see... Like, I oh, want this so you know what you just made me like, realize? Like, you just made me Inferno? realize at the same time as we're doing best storylines, some of them contain the worst. So here's here's the worst storyline ever if you want people to respect CSGO as an elite eSport modders. So who won the last two majors? Um, Norbert and NPL? It's like, <laughs> close CS down. I think that's enough internet for today. Like, I'd, 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 listen, it's I know, a team game. I know exactly. Like, look, on the one hand, I want Simple to win another major launders, but if it means MPL has to win. I don't know, actually. You know, I might have to give that one up. <laughs> That's some yeah, like porn it. stars level shit. What? Best I can yeah, like, do is Norbert. Oh, I get, oh hey, Gabe, can uh, can uh, fucking Guardian and Nico win majors? Uh, best I can do is Norbert and Ned Sounds brilliant. All right, okay. Yeah. Okay, with Bit, with Bit, okay. He had this fucking unreal rookie year, whatever, won, yeah. the, won the major. But he was a superstar in the We Play Academy League. And for me, MPL was like, he was never even the best player on Navi Jr. ever. Like, he was like, he, even Hedrick was better than him. So for him to get that call up for Hedrick, oh, that was like a sour idea. taste in my mouth. I think I like swapped out Hedrick for him for, because like they forced Hedrick to op when Monacy left the academy team. Then he liked opping, but like, I feel like he would have been fine rifling if you asked him to. They yeah. should have just had Hedrick play, play for they? Navi. It's just obvious. He's, clear, he's a better player, man. Yeah. He's way better. So this move is strange. Honestly, I like Blade obviously has done so much with player development. But I mean, I guess it doesn't mean he can't miss. And I feel like with the MPL move, it was sort of like, what, what, it, what did he see here that you know we couldn't see? <laughs> Oh, by the way, that's the one thing. I, sadly, by the way, I know Blade and he would never do this. He actually is like a robot. He doesn't seem to like really have mad emotions. He doesn't care about getting proven people wrong on the internet. But my dream would be that Lord is that, that Navi actually somehow does win the major. And then Blade goes on a Richard Lewis style. Like, how's my NPL today, dickhead? How's, <laughs> how's the greatest coach of all time today, dickhead? Because imagine that. Imagine if Blade actually started talking shit, like just messages at Sonic. Like, at Sonic, like, I don't even need IGLs to win these motherfuckers, man. Like, oh, it'd be so sick, wouldn't it? Imagine Imagine that if he turned heel right at the end of the game. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> because the best thing is, if you know Blade and Simple, right? Look, if they win the major, they probably will just force themselves to pretend they actually respect NPL. But they're such twats. I could even see them like winning and then in the interview being like, yeah, I'm actually surprised we did win because uh, some players were making a lot of mistakes. And was, <laughs> they're, they're so bad they would even do that in like the speech or something, you know, like when they win. Like Simple's so brutal. You know, I mean, some of my teammates almost let us down, but in the end, we did win the game. Like, we've that's, just won the major, bro. That's Please one thing, just though, let this with... go. That's the one thing with Navi where it's actually a little bit hard to believe in them winning this because I think they understand that their team is flawed. But a couple of yeah. the other teams here recognize that this is probably as good as it's going to get for them. I mean, I'm talking like heroic. This is as good as it's getting. G2, sure. they took that long break. It's been yeah. almost a month since they're even playing a match. Like, they should have worked on everything. Uh, probably Vitality, Vitality too. Yeah. Vitality are feeling pretty good right now. FaZe still have the lineup that was able to complete the Grand Slam and win the last major. So, like... I mean, there's a lot of reasons that the those teams feel like th it makes sense for them to win, but like at the end of the day with Navi, the mental fortitude, it might it just might slip because they know ah like 
we weren't really ready for this major. If this came in a few months, if we swapped out NPL, or if, if he just got a lot better, maybe they had a chance. But, like, it's hard. It's still hard in some ways to count out simple. But, like, I, I'm still not even entirely sold on the electronic IGL situation. Like, I, despite what Blade says, that he's a better caller than Boomich was, I'm not seeing it. Like, what, the, what they did at, at Rio on their map pick on Ancient, they got, like, three rounds T-side, and it was just... Like it was, it was really hard to watch that that game versus. No, it was not even three. They got one round T side on Ange, on their map pick with electronic calling. Like I don't know, mm. I didn't see that in big games with Boomich calling. Like they were winning a lot of stuff like that. So that's that they they to me feel like of these top five teams the most flawed, but they also have an incredible ceiling. And and you know from the reviews I like I did some. Oh, what was it at Rio? I did a piece of content where I asked every other IGL what they thought about every other IGL. And when it came to Navi, I didn't hear a single player say that Electronic was a better caller than they felt Boomich was. Or they felt that okay. Navi was always harder to play against when they had Boomich calling. <coughs> yeah. And of course, yeah, like 2021, of course, like more fresh in their memory at that time. So like that was when Navi were their strongest. But that also does say a lot about, you know, what we think about Navi right now. The problem with that whole topic as well to me, though, is like the one-for-one one doesn't work because Boomich had Electronic playing really fucking sick without yeah. being... A, you know what I mean? So that's like the part of Unblade. It's like we're not even comparing the fucking... Well, this is absolutely apples to oranges, mate. This doesn't make any sense, right? How about this, then? We've already essentially, with the heroic one, done the one of like who of the big names and the favorites, you know, who would be the most least likely to fail would be heroic. I think we all agree on that one. I think that spicier one, if we flip it the other ways, which of the big names is the most likely to flunk the major? Dude, I think there's a lot that can... can fear this one i mean the aforementioned right. navi couldn't they be in the mix phase who would you pick who would you go for i want one from each year who would you go for as to i would the take, most I would take phase i would take phase i think phase is the most well well i don't know are we are, if we include like liquid i mean i would say liquid if you want to include them Okay. Good. Okay. I would say I would say Liquid are probably my most likely to just flunk out. I, I haven't really seen anything from them too lately. Like them losing to Furia in the way that they did at the RMR is still pretty much seared into my brain, and also the way that like with with them with with the problem with Heroic that I have is that their ceiling is capped because Cadian is probably of those top five teams the worst opper. OC is worse than Cadian by a considerable margin. And on top of that, th with Liquid, you have a couple weak players there. Like Nitro, probably one of the weakest fraggers also of these top six teams. Uh, OC, I already just said that. I mean, like, and Elige kind of, he's coming back into some form here and there. It, it's just streaky with Elige. I can't, I don't know what to expect game to game. Yakindar has the highest variant style known to man and then NAF, this pillar of consistency can't always deliver enough impact in a game because if the the first plan and even this the b option goes so badly what can he really do in a one versus three one versus four other than get two kills and still <clears throat> lose the round i got a lot to say about liquid Go that's on. a in negative it's you know when we talk about 2019 for example you know a lot of people hate on stewie because of the last couple of years on eg and he really ruined his own reputation but you know when he moved on to liquid the next like five months they won the grand slam they got the quarters at, at berlin whatever it was they had their best period and that's because of stewie at his best was a support caller and you know nitro's obviously not good enough we can see to be like that main caller it's like really make this team take it to the next level because like they have your kinder now they have a leash they have now they have an unbelievable core we have a team right now that basically is like 2019 but without the support caller in stewie and they have not adapted to the fact that they picked up a very strong offer in theory like since simple has has played on liquid liquid have never played or around a very strong offer and have clearly not shown that they can. And in my opinion, OC is a way better player than we've seen so far from Liquid. And if he, if in my opinion, if OC played under phase right now, he would be looking like Brokey. I think Kerrigan would be able to get that out of him. That's how good I think OC could be and showed that he was at one point as he was coming up. So in my opinion, Liquid system has been so rigid that they're trying to play like their 2019 self without the, uh, the, the support assistance of calling and not adapting to the fact that they now need to activate their opera and just resigning to the idea that like they were never really that they never peaked with a top opera, you know, when Nitro was Nitro and Stewie were hybriding or whatever, when they were all about rifles. 
trying to think, because I actually think for this one, you could go so many angles. Like, the joke is, like I said, Heroic's like the easy one for the one least likely to fail. Dude, should, couldn't almost all these teams fail? Like, let's be real, there's a world where G2 could just fuck up, lose a bunch of the best of ones, get in trouble, then play someone no. good in a best of three. I could easily see Faze doing it for the same. I mean, the, the, one of the main reasons why Faze could definitely do it, by the way, is, like, they don't always have, like, they, they don't really have the one player that just always 1v9s the game. So if, if that's why I've always felt like if they start slow, you just hope they do some mad clutch comeback, otherwise they just lose the game. Obviously, Liquid's a good one, good shout, because, I mean, even confidence-wise, they look a bit less like they think they can win than the other team. Vitality could definitely do it. I mean, fucking hell, d already has worse performances at Majors, plus this would be the perfect time for Spinks to just have a bad series or something, you know, that all it'd take. This well, is why I like the Heroic Grand Finals idea, because, like, if Heroic were in Challenger stage, I don't think any of us would have a question they'd get out. Like, they would definitely get out. But like FaZe, for example, like they just seem like they have such an ego right now that they're too lazy to like start fast or like they're just surprised that people are so good right now that they could lose. Rio's in everyone's minds. Dude, the Liquid, joke is you could almost yeah. argue FaZe is more likely to lose in the challenger stage against the bad teams than if they played yeah. the good teams in the next phase, right? Like it actually I mean, seems like it. Yeah, it's the underdogs yeah. that they have to be scared yeah. of, right? Not even the good teams. <laughs> it's true. I, yeah, I mean, if I if I had to if I had to say a name other than Liquid, my second most likely to fail actually would would probably be uh, Phase, but G two is like right there with them, mm -hmm. mostly because like the Phase angle, I think we've we've kind of discussed, but like the G two one is that they haven't played for nearly a month, and so everything that they've been trying in practice, they don't know if it actually is strong in officials right now. And I think that that's where a lot of these teams, like the Apex, Monty, Nine, they have such a leg up because they've actually drilled everything. And even though there's a lot of data to look at for anti-stratting purposes, like you can see the plays that they're probably going to run, the style that they're going to use. With G2, they're unsure of their style right now. And so if they if they have fixed a lot of things, or they think they fixed a lot of things based off of scrims they've been playing, maybe Maybe it's working in the scrims but you never know like in a match is that going to work and then are you going to lose some of that faith because you like you said like launders like nico thinks that this major is his and if things start going badly with the game plan that swanee just promoted to head coach by the way right before the major and then hooksy came up with a guy that has been you know just like the talk of the town constantly in terms of wavering opinions then how is nico not going to just say you know what screw this game plan i'm just gonna do what i want to do and like I, it feels like internally this team could collapse in a mental way whereas phase would probably just lose slowly and gradually because they're just getting outgunned out dueled and they're they're playing kind of a lazy reactive <coughs> style by the way one... i hadn't even thought of that as well that would also be such an insane narrative wouldn't it if hooksy wins the last major like i know yeah. richard just just delete twitter <laughs> at that point in time it's not worth it because like what's the point you know yeah, like right. yeah i know he just can't do anything at that point can he if he wins the last major oh god and by the way if he wins too? obviously what about then, today, yeah. we've been saying that in green room hooksy should just year. say that what about the major dickhead and then also just say it by the way i don't use telegram under any circumstances so, <laughs> you know, just to make jokes that'd be the perfect time to clear the ground you know just put that out there in the world yeah. i do not have one, a telegram account the one thing that that could be nice here for g2 uh maui is the fact that they did so I, they did prove that over a break they could still be good like most teams do not uh survive the year the year start after a month break most teams do not start after having too long of a boot camp sure. before playing their officials and regularly need to play officials but g2 did go from world final into winning Cato after a pretty big break, which is something that honestly most teams have not been able to do. So I think like under preparation, G2 have shown that they can start fast, whereas like, you know, Liquid are going to start like shit in this challenger stage. You know they are. FaZe could be slow. Um, but I actually think G2 could be one of the few teams that without a lot of officials actually still start strong. Because the, the, the real reason I have a problem with the G2 one is, like, I'm one of the people who never thought the lineup ever should have been bad once they got JKS. Like, I actually look back, dude. I have watched back so many fucking times that RMR for Rio. Like, it do, even when I'm watching it, I think they're going to win because it doesn't make sense that that lineup of players could lose to these opponents. Mm. Like, I, do, I don't really give a shit. They were, yeah, but Gamer League's a play. It doesn't even matter. Like, they should actually be able to tie one of Nico's hands behind their back and still win that series. Like, it, it that so the fact that that can happen means I have to think it's possible now as well, even though there's no reason for it to happen. Like, now they should be... In theory, on paper they should be a lock for the top eight at least you know it's then you know who do they get and what happens then and pressure but like you have to throw it in there there is a world where maybe they just flunk right how about this what we'll do is because obviously we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the big names we've already addressed a bit let's to have some fun let's go to the other end of the equation you guys mentioned some names earlier so let's do what for you 
would be the best underdog run that can happen. You can pick whatever angle you want. It could be like it's a fresh team or something about the game or yeah. you like the specific okay. team. So give me an angle. Come on, man. What's an underdog well, okay, run you'd for, like? For, for narrative sake, I actually have one that probably has flown under the radar that I think is pretty interesting is that if Crims is able to actually do something with Fnatic, like I don't really care that much, honestly, about the Fnatic team, but about Crims's legacy right now, if he's able to make playoffs like he did at Rio and actually just kind of wild, show once again his value as an overall player, like a really solid rifler, like when I looked at actually like S tier land trophies for a lot of the big names at this event, Crim Crims is tied with Kerrigan right now with 19. They have 19... S tier land trophies and Crims has some of the most majors here. Like oh, with, with the Astralis, most. most of the Astralis guys being out, the only people that I think are ahead of him are Dupree and Majisk at this major. And so for him to actually go deep with the chance to actually, you know, pull off an upset, show a little bit of that magic at the end of it all, I think that would just be a really cool fairy tale run for him. Um, that being said, I don't really care too much for Nika Dawes. I don't really care too much for the rest of this team. I just think that for him individually, uh, it would be it would be a really great way to tie a bow on what was a fantastic career throughout yeah. the entire the entirety of this game. It, so kind of like what you said, uh, Duncan, about Dupree and how he's sort of just like getting pulled to you know the 19 majors or whatever, but ultimately is like actually one of the biggest liabilities on Vitality right now. Whereas unfortunately for Crims. He's kind of trying to carry from the back, right? He's actually doing a really good job individually. And of all the players that we talk about when it comes to longevity, Crims is not the one who's been talked about the most at any point in history, but has consistently been good in tier one over time. I think, by he the way, he about, would be yeah. my pick for the player with the true best longevity ever. Like, right, it, right. It just, like you say, he's basically never been bad, ever. Like people would always try to give it to Forrest, but Crims yeah. has actually been competing, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. like he Crims is what everybody kind of wishes Forrest did, but Crims is doing it still. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love I love that one, but yeah, I think it's impossible with his his lineup. Like, if he was the star player of the team, then maybe there's like some off chance. But I feel like he's doing too much from behind to like make this possible for for Fnatic. Is yeah, I'm sure that's not. Who a weird would your pick be for the underdog I, Rolandes? Yeah, I think that Who the only want? like the person I think would be okay. They they haven't won one before. It's still a, a team we'd expect to see in top eight, maybe. But that's Ents because I think Snappy okay. in the past like two years has shown that he's actually like a top probably a top two IGL in terms of the names that he's brought into tier one from tier two have just instantly become insanely good. Like we got, Vi the, the only reason Vitality have a chance of this major is because Snappy raised Sphinx's value so much that they picked him up and then he honeymooned and then they didn't know what to do with him. And then they brought him back to where he was. Sphinx would not be the player he is today if not for Snappy. Nerts instantly from tier two, lots of promise as we've seen from lots of players. Sort of reminds me of like Flames, for example. Um, to use another Israeli example, Flamesy, you know, played on OG. He's been up and down, not got that, reached that potential at all. What if he played under Snappy? You know, when we see someone like Nerds, we're like, wow, anything's really possible when it comes to Snappy. Sun Pius, right from Movie Star Writers, obviously could be very good, but also Tier 2. Snappy has never had the Tier 1 litter in the same way like Kerrigan has had lots of Tier 1 players to pick from and also made a lot of rookies very good. But Snappy, he talked about the Danish ladder in terms of what options he gets. And he has always been at the bottom of the barrel in terms of what players he can get. And that's why Ents went international. And when, as soon as he went international and he got all those tier two picks, he brought them up and has made Ents one of the, not only one of the best farm teams, but also one of the best teams as well. Like if you look at Maus, they have consistently sold off tier one and great players over time and never been contenders for trophies, except for that period of time where they had Kerrigan on it. Yeah, and they had like the summit and everything like that. But Ents have also had to suffer from selling off some of their best players and also been tournament contenders at the exact same time, which I don't know if anyone in the roster can say that. I will say that Ents was going to be my pick. I mean, similar reasons. Uh, like, I actually just think it would be really cool for Snappy to have like a playoff run in the end of his fucking career because people don't know. He's one of those people who tragically, like at the majors, he never had the runs there. It was always the other tournaments and the medium size events. And stuff. So uh, by the way, I think, uh, except for Antwerp last year. So basically, I think it would also just be a cool way to end the game. I mean, he's basically had like a mini Carrigan renaissance where people counted you out, but at the end, you actually had maybe your best period ever. And then also, yeah, the Nerds one's a brilliant one because like the joke is, it almost sounded cynical like wait a minute so you guys haven't been good since you had Spinx. you just recruited any israeli player like all right but it turns out they're actually all cracked out like if people don't know sure it's only like i looked it up now he's only played 23 maps on land this year but nurts's numbers are 1.22 rating 1.31 impact rating he has 0.79 kills per round and 0.63 deaths per round like 
an AT3 ADR. Like, that's bonkers. What's, what's super impressive about Nerds' numbers like that is that it wasn't just a plug and play for what Spinks used to do also for Ents. Mm. Like, it's actually, um, he recognized, or Snappy recognized Nerds' ability to just be a great entry fragger or a more explosive player in general. And he's put him in a lot of positions. And that's why I think the impact rating is probably really high because he's just getting a lot of opening kills on top of the plays that they like to run out of spawn. And then he actually can slow the rounds down pretty well right now, too. I think, yeah, Snappy, Snappy's a really cool one in general because he's definitely one of those in-game leaders that doesn't have the hardware to prove that he was an excellent leader. But you kind of can only do so much as as your uh, org's pocketbook sometime, sometimes allows. So, yeah, it would be super cool. And also, just like Heroic, another team that's actually just a good T-side team that have real strats you can watch and go, this is, this is fundamentally good. I can explain why this is good. It's not just players doing brilliant things and then going like, did the IGL want him to do that or not? It's not like actually. Like when you watch Snappy and Hidden, you just know they did a good game. You can just give them props, can't you? What about... Um, all right, is there another one we need for this one? Is there another one that could be good? I mean, Liquid are like the least likely team that should still be able to somehow do it, you know? Like they... they they, they actually do have an argument from the player's perspective and have enough wins over a lot of the teams in top 10 to say that they they could make it far enough, like their ESL, ESL Pro League run. I mean, you even have things like OC and Playoff somehow is even better than in, in group stages. So, I, I and like Alige is having a, a really good, has a really good form recently, which is something he hasn't been able to do consistently with your Kinder on the team at the same time. So that's huge to pair with Nathalie, who's been the most consistent. So there, I just don't believe... Liquid will make it out of Legends this time. I just, I just don't. But I actually think they they have players that could you could see in semis easily. You know what's sad is like on paper, like they are only number eight ranked. Like in theory, I'm supposed to say Fury could. Like Fury's in the semis, of the last major. Like on paper, Kiss Rot was one of the best players in the world. But like the problem yeah. is that that's like probably. <laughs> They're probably the worst of the big teams. Like I have no faith in this team whatsoever. Like I could see this team. I could see them making eight top eight, but I could also see them completely blowing the fucking Swiss. What's, what's interesting about Fury is that what we noticed at the America's RMR, though, is that they didn't always just play this balls-to-the-wall style every single round. Like, they had a little bit more of a tempered aggression, especially when they played against Liquid in their series. That makes me think that they actually tried... They're trying to, like make their style a little bit more sophisticated or more European. And so I think that could catch off a couple teams, but if you're just adopting a new style for a high Changing pressure event, yeah, yeah. Then, then it's going to be really tough to imagine that you're going to actually have a really deep run. But it's very possible to believe, like, I, I think they're going to definitely like go two three at a minimum in legends but that's such a, like a what is that claim you know that doesn't really say a lot like but i don't think they're just going to get like blown out i mean despite all of the the flack that they've been getting and art's been getting lately they still have my in my eyes the best rifler uh today in case serato still th i still think he's the best Here's how I'm doing yeah. it, Launders. You have to understand, in the modern day, the way I'm wrecking people, I'm doing like Trump style nicknames for them, like just stick, and then it fucks with you because it like sort of embodies something about you. So you know how when someone dies on stream, famously, what you do is you press F in chat, don't you? Well, we all know Art dies all the fucking time. So when he dies, his alter ego is fart because you press F. So it's F and then capital T at the end. So there's, I'm going to keep, I'm going to run with that, boys. It's going to get real old before it ever gets good, put out with. Don't worry about that. So I'm taking if you're to fail this major, there you go. It's your Nafoni. Yeah, exactly. Your... <laughs> oh, by the way, you know, there was that. That's also how you know that it does work when you do these nicknames, Lawrence. Because when I did like my first like top 10 again, of like, except it was actually my, the real my top 10, not like top 10 rankings, I did accidentally write Nafani, but with a PH. Because he, <laughs> yeah, he must have just like, yeah, exactly, the brain worm got to me. Even though I was writing his name for real, I put it PH instead of F. I literally DM'd <laughs> Thorne and it was like, hey, there's a typo in this. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Because I saw it, I was like, no, oh, what the fuck? It's yeah. bullshit. Because in my brain, I must have rewritten his name. Well, over, like isn't a 40 so <laughs> I, I i have a question okay i have a question because i actually watched i watched every zywoo demo from rio to see if he actually got like so good or if his team was like so much better and my conclusion was vitality actually did get a lot better on top of zywoo having a very very good tournament overall and on top of Spinks having like one sure. of his best tournaments overall so did you guys see vitality actually getting better or are they still fraudulent like i mean i will say going to do that again 
Oh, that's the problem. Is that the point? The problem is this, Lord. Is, is like the actual stats for that event. They all were weird. Like Dupree was something like one point one two rating or something for the event. Like the problem is, I just don't believe that can happen again. Like I've just because the problem is, I've wa I've watched a lot of the Vitality games ever since they made this lineup because I've been waiting the whole time. Like when is this lineup going to finally become really fucking good? And they never quite get there, do they? They always come this close, and then that's when they have like the terrible string of games. So the the issue is, I can sort of believe in the good players. Like they will be good. I think Spinks will be pretty good i even think magisk is fairly reliable the other two though mate i just go into games nowadays when vitality plays like right which one of these two is going to fuck up is it going to be the yeah. it a game with two kills is apex just going to die nine times in a row like which is it going to be because it's going to be one of the two somehow <laughs> You know what the fucking sad part is? Is that Dupree is such a good player uh, in terms of how much he knows about the game that sure. every time he dies, it completely changes the outcome of the round. And I think that shows you know, how smart he is in the sense of he knows when he needs to take a very good duel. And when he plays his really good games, he completely takes over the game because his, his positioning is actually still there. But honestly, he just like fucks his spray up or like something really stupid that you don't want him to die on. Yeah. He'll end up losing the round that way. But we saw, like, when they beat Cloud9 on that Vertigo comeback, yeah, Cloud9 completely crumbled. Like, they crumbled the phase. Like, they crumbled all these other teams in history. But it was Vitality were there to catch it because of Dupree's masterclass T-side. One of the best T-sides that we've seen all year. And that's because it's still in him to understand how to be incredibly impactful. But, like, his aim was rare. His aim was there for Rio. Wrong with you. Yeah, I mean, okay, for, for Vitality and to answer your question more specifically, I think that there's going to be a slight regressing to the mean because, yeah, I, I just don't think that Dupree's mechanics hold up necessarily. Also, sometimes I see him just get outplayed around like smokes or like newer utility that, that teams like to throw. So, yeah, there's a lot of experience, but I think in terms of the micro, like, I don't know, just... Does Dupree grind FPL? Because it strikes me like he doesn't even touch that space at all, and I definitely think that he should have been for a while. Never but, really did during Astralis era, though, I think, either. Yeah, and so it kind of relies on just, like, fundamental understanding of how he should be positioning and how he should play out certain situations to help his team the most. And so I think he's going to regress. I think Ma Magix, though, for the longest time to me, was the second best player on Vitality after that initial honeymoon with Sphinx, it felt like the only two people that were holding up their end of the bargain were Zaiwu and Magisk. And so I actually think that Magisk has probably a little bit more to give. And I still, like, the thing was with, with Vitality, I have them definitely making it to the playoffs of this event. Like, I don't I don't think there's any way that through the Legend stage they're not going to make it. Just because they're, like, Zaiwu is so reliable right now that even if he gets a little bit, like, this, this extra boost that Sphinx is giving right now, actually providing a lot of impact and my biggest criticism with Sphinx back when that like downturn from Vitality happened post Pro League was that he kind of would just push it random times sometimes give up man advantages and I feel like he's playing within the system but still like the the, the flashes of flare are there for Sphinx and they're just like they're I don't I think they had a sit down with him where they were basically like you can't be doing this shit every round just do it here and there like pick your spots a little bit wiser and maybe they outline some of those conditions for that and now it just seems like his decision making overall is better for the team. Mm. Yeah, the only other thing about Vitality that's like on my mind is just that like before Rio I didn't think they were going to make it through Legends. I thought it was actually very unlikely they made playoffs at because it just they just they look so fraudulent to me. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. Like besides Zaiwu, and then Zaiwu even tapers off like the deeper you go usually. So like there was no, there's just there was no simple on the team. Um, but now it seems possible. If you look at the map pool, they actually have I, the strongest map pool of any team right now. They're two they have worst an underrated one. Played. The problem they have yeah. is they're not like the true best on any map. But I know what you mean. Like they can definitely no, no, put no. Like a solid four or five. Their nuke right now could be it could be argued that they're, they're the, best? the best. Yeah, because they have uh, they have uh, they have uh, phase and oh for people they beat, beat these guys. are all the best nukes. Yeah, but they, yeah, they're true. eight and zero. Oh. They're Fair eight enough. and zero oh on nuke right now. So okay. they, they actually and then their two worst maps they went three they won three out of four games on both overpass and mirage. Average. Well, that would definitely be a game change because they've never in this team ever had like the one map they could like always win on a whole map. So if they have that, that'll be a yeah. game changer for sure. That could yeah, be, give so a chance something. to win then maybe. Yeah. I think Apex in an interview said like, oh, we've worked on our worst map and it shows. So I went and looked and I was like, wow, you actually, they actually did play their worst map a few times and, and they're a lot better. The bottom of their map pool is really strong right now.
By the way, just on the Dupree thing, the one thing I would say is, I would just take this moment, because by the way, all a lot of great players just eventually regress, fall off, aren't as good. This is why when we talked earlier about people like Crims, that's why when people have like, or like RPK, when people have like insane longevity, I have mad respect, because that means they didn't just keep playing a long time, guys. That means they actually ad uh, essentially adapted and played different roles, and by the end, you're just playing like a shit support role, like an RPK. The problem Dupree has for me is he's, he hasn't fully been able to do that. Like, to me, the thing is, Dupree, as an actual, like, good player mechanically, had a very long fucking peak. Like, he had probably like, six or seven years. He was really good. So the problem with someone like that is, like, it's going to be really hard to sort of learn how to play without winning the duel, as it were. You're just used to that. Your whole career was, I always win the duel, or I always am in a good position, or if I go with the flash, I'm going to get the shot. Like, it's really hard. People don't underestimate. Like, I have mad respect for the RPKs and Crims, where they can sort of, like, adapt their game to not, as you say, not ever be a liability, but still be, like, adding something to the mix. That's really hard. Like, mad props. Mad props to yeah. anyone who can do that. Actually, wouldn't Dupree be the longevity go? If, it is in the mix as well, for sure. Because he's got, yeah, he's got one, seven years in top 20 is actually pretty insane. Like he fell off a lot on Vitality, but that's still like, especially if he does well at this last major, then that'll be an interesting argument. Sure. Right. What about, um, here's one. We've sort of addressed this a bit, but this, this can be its own category. Who needs to win this major the most? <laughs> Nico, man. Yeah, Nico, Nico, uh, surely. Yes, yeah, so, like, I just, I don't know what the fuck it's going to feel like if he just, I, I want to, I like, like, I just, I always have that, you know, Nico on the Jumbotron, confetti coming down, hat. Oh, dude, I've always said this. I think the this most brutal iconic image. image ever in CS history is when the fucking confetti is like sticking to his tears. Like, <laughs> Because yeah. that wasn't what that was designed for. That was for the winner, obviously. But that's what's yeah. so insane. I've always thought in CS, by the way, can't we just like politely let the losers leave, then set the confetti and all the pyros off? Why do you have to sit there as the loser? Like, like literally yeah. confetti. Ah, please, how you So fucking gross in it, I know. I had this weird like list of players who either did or didn't win majors that for me, just watching over the years, felt like these are players that I always expected to win. Okay. So I have what I've called a big five, which yeah, yeah. is Go on. Nico, Guardian, Kerrigan, Zaiwu, and Simple. And I think Zaiwu just kind of sneaks in there just because of the unreal consistency in the last four years okay. and also minimal uh, major opportunities because of COVID, obviously. So having... Like Nico and Guardian are the two players to me that are the biggest sore spots in terms of haven't won a major yet. Dude, how sick is it that before that Stockholm, they, they all could have just ended with no majors there? You could have had yeah. all your five with no majors at the end. It, yeah, isn't that crazy? So I was it, thinking yeah. about that. You know, Simple barely got it, and that's why yeah. it feels so apparent. Um, Kerrigan also, right? Like there's, a, like, there's no guarantee Kerrigan wins this major. So if he didn't win it at that time, even though it felt like an arrow was coming, well, who knows? Like, so... Right now, Nico and Guardian are the two players that stand out the most. And then my like short list for like other players who I could have seen winning a major at some point in history are, you know, because they're so good or whatever, or like uh, Elysian Naf as two NA players, you know, just yeah. because of Liquid Arrow, because of their uh, individual consistency. Config is another who, you know, maybe could have joined Astral. By the way, way, I'll tell you what, uh, if you want to put on names, like obviously they don't meet those Europeans, but actually the two NA names would be Elysian Naf. They've got pretty fucking good long longevity yeah. too. <laughs> like yeah. Naf's hasn't even ended. They that's just don't have an argument for this good. major. That, yeah, that's true. Part. That's true. Nitro Loki actually has a lot of longevity. Yeah, but that's because the I genius. Yeah, <laughs> no, here's the thing. You are te by the most technical definition, you are right. But that is because he is playing the most low level of all the players. So you have nailed it. It's sort of true. That is sort of true. It is. Uh, well, you know. One other thing with the. Um, with Although the by that logic, my boy Exist used to be the king of that before. I guess then by the same logic, right? Because he just kept going till the bitter end, mate. He wasn't good. Yeah, one true. Another thing with the Liquid Angle and Naf and Elyage and Nitro, for that matter, is that they're the one team of the Grand Slam winners that didn't win a major. Like, like it's kind of it feels a little bit weird that you look at the mm. other three teams in Phase, Navi, and Astralis. All of them have their majors at this point, but for for Liquid, it's just like you know they missed it obviously because of the player break before going into Berlin, and that's just such a weird storyline for why they didn't capture that. And it also makes their their Grand Slam feel very weird because it was record setting in terms of how fast they were able to complete it but also how quickly they cooled off after it that's also an interesting one because like I, I remember that same i share that feeling right when that happened fuck this player break definitely killed the momentum of a pretty feeble team that needed to have the maximum momentum whereas like some other teams would have still won the major you know after a break but with liquid you kind of knew it wasn't going to happen but the other thing was they lost to astralis in that quarter is where during the entire grand slam run they managed to avoid them consistently so like it is a question of 
were they ever going to win that game? As a astrologer, if, if the like land was bad enough way. quality, they were able to win <laughs> the game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. Who, who else fits this category for who needs it the most? Because here's the thing. You can actually go... There's like two other angles you can go on this. You can also go with people who've won before. Like both Carrigan and Simple could do with a second major, mate. Like remember, they're trying yeah, to go yeah, for true, greatest true, ever true. at their role. So like, I, I, even though for me, like I actually think both of them can now make the case if you want to make the case they're the best at their role. But the point is, for people who are ring cowers, they're always going to go... Called the area has two, fucking, you know, whatever. Oh, someone else has three. Uh, divide. Um, uh, no, yeah, sadly, yeah. sadly, none of you who count rings ever do the device one, I notice. Even though, spoiler, he's got all the rings and the entire fucking resume. So I've sort of proven you wrong with my career there, that you never ever yeah, cared about you, you rings and titles. Because you know? it's just like on pit. Look, the stupid thing is, I but, test but it's zero, the though. But with Cold Zero, though, he does have back to back number ones as well sure. on, on top of the rings, which is like the only other player to do that would be like. You know, he's on that short list of like get right. Uh, is it Olaf who has two as well? No, and no, Olaf has one. Zaiwu and Nika. Oh, Olaf has one. So simple Zaiwu, Coldera, and get right. uh, and get right are the only yeah, yeah, that's right, that's it. Players with two, yeah. So that's a. No, because the thing is, if you're, if you're essentially what I'm thinking of here is not really the people who saw Simple play now, but it's the kid in 10 years who looks up and like, like, what, you only won one CSGO major? How could right. he be the GOAT? Like, if you just have two, that already becomes less of a discussion, doesn't it? Like, if he has yeah. two, it's all cool, but, isn't it? Especially because, by the way, if he wins a major like the other one, it's going to be as the best player. So, in fact, you can even make the case, by the way, this is how you do it, that actually that is what proves Simple's the GOAT. All mm -hmm. those other names had majors where someone else could have won it for them or someone else could have been the greatest in the final. If you're Simple, your whole career was like you just have to do it yourself mate so like it'd be kind of cool if you won two majors this is one i didn't really want to get into but i don't because it's this one might take a long time but it's like the the because you guys had the conversation about twist and Elige, which was really interesting about the criteria for what makes the goat um and for igls i i feel for me like accomplishments matter a lot more than for other roles um because it's hard to obviously say how good they are based on their stats you know besides their results so when it comes to Glaive and Kerrigan, you know, if Kerrigan does this win the second major, like for me, I'm still leaning towards Glaive because there's a few arguments. And this, again, this is like a big, big conversation, even though Kerrigan has lots of good ones. Okay, well, I'll ask you this, Thorin, because I, I know that you're leaning towards Kerrigan. If he wins, is there any shadow of a doubt that he's the GOAT, or do you already feel like that right now? Oh, here's the thing. I don't think it's actually open and shut. Like, I already thought you could have made, like, a convoluted argument before you won a major, but you'd be more be going on other factors. Mm -hmm. Here's what you would say, especially if he won this major, by the way. If he wins two majors, well, spoiler, no one else in history ever won with an international team. Obviously, we don't count, like, people who all speak Russian as international team. Sorry, we don't. So, bear in mind, no one ever did it once. If he's done it fucking twice, and at the end of the game, when everyone claims they all learned the game and all the level was high in the parry, like... At that point, he has his own argument, doesn't he? Like, Glaive has an amazing one for with, like, Danish team. Carrigan has one. And also, the other thing for Carrigan for me is this. Glaive realistically did it with one core and one player change. Carrigan, unironically, has one player connection. Obviously, he had rain in two of his phase teams. Aside from... Oh, and Rops in his mouse in his phase ones now. Aside from those two player connections, he'll have done it with, like, four distinct teams or something. That's ridiculous. Like, right. as in being at the championship level. You know, he didn't win the majors. But just to be at that level... Because remember, there's another thing is... IGL is like at the end of, I always just it's the same way as I describe IGL in, in a round right in a round if I get like the openers of the openers I planned you do the call that I called you throw the utility you get onto the site and then you lose a 2v2 I did my job as the IGL you you you're, you're the ones with the crosshair and the guns like I can't so I, I think it's the same with tournaments if you can just get your team to that championship status that's something too because mm -hmm. all yeah, I'll say I... is this I'll spin it the other way if it's not if it's so easy to take a lineup like Mouse by the way I'll say this right now I think some of the lineups Glaives had that he didn't win with were better than the fucking Mouse lineup Carrigan made this is why you can't beat fans Carrigan mm -hmm. took a Mouse lineup that nobody thought could be one of the best in the world right if people don't know Frozen was like 16 years old Rops wasn't even Rops as he is now and Woxic was nobody he was a hero on one map every now and then for Hellraisers that's it and one of the most most hard-headed players ever. And then Chris J was supposed to essentially be retired at that point. He took that team to top two in the world. Like, mate, let me know when Glaive wants to fuck around. Go international, get essentially what are a bunch of tier two players or tier, low tier one, and then go to top two in the world, mate. I'll sit back and wait. You can have all day long if you want. That's yeah, a pretty got... good accomplishment in a different way, if you get what I mean. It's not the same as yeah. winning a tournament with the best players, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might have some excuse for Glaive in the sense of like, as soon as someone wins too much, then they start 
Like just that's the shit. Is that is the shitest happens, angle of all time? It doesn't. All of our favorite players. And it doesn't. Like, Shall I tell players? you what happens to people you overrate? Well, Kerrigan took so long to win the major, right? And then since since then, is obviously not had. He's not had the era. Here's like, what. Here's the thing. I've heard this argument fall on. Is it goes like this? It goes like this, right? Well, because Glaive and Cold Zero won too much too soon, it sort of sated their appetite to win, so they sort of chilled. But okay. Carrigan, because he didn't win and Device didn't win early, what happened was they just kept trying to win, and it meant after like seven or eight years they won. So that means they're actually not as good because they were much better for a long, long time and won the same amount at the end, but they then didn't give... What? Like, you've actually inverted the hierarchy of values that I use. My hierarchy of values goes like this. If you win loads at the beginning and then fuck all afterwards, you obviously weren't a true champion, were you? A true champion champions motivated internally not externally he wants to win because he like it's like simple i think the guy's a dickhead but i guarantee he wakes up every day and is like i should win the game of course i'm the best i've worked to be the best i'm gonna work to be the best tomorrow yeah. is he better than me now no he isn't i'm gonna win like the guys like that don't get sated if you get sated spoiler you weren't like a true champion to me you know what i mean well, yeah but okay well there's something we said though about like you you have like a goal like even if you're a true champion ultra competitive you and you're the most ambitious possible you have an ultimate goal of like i want to be the best of all time yeah. and then you know like probably Harrison should probably not. shouldn't stop after two then should you probably should well, well, i want to be the greatest of all time or two rings actually never mind Cheer well me. like let's say let's Cheer say glaive 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 stopped at four you know whatever he stopped that he stopped four. forever Harrigan. mate forget fucking stop them he stopped forever you <laughs> put him in the grave okay, already he's gone it, he's over yeah. he's done but like it's Kerrigan over, got <laughs> Kerrigan got one you yeah. know Kerrigan got one yeah so it's just so if like he gets two two's not if bad. he gets two yeah exactly exactly yeah. and so then you know then i would be like then all the other arguments would open up even or block even more for me of like all these different rosters yeah but here's my argument against Kerrigan winning one. all these rosters glaive you know got his four rings with a team that he made work and I think that he was also the specific answer to Kerrigan on this roster. So when he came in and then had the team won, when he solved their biggest problem, which was not the quality of calling. Obviously, Kerrigan was a great caller. It was a choking issue. And so Glaive came in, solved the choking issue. The famous Atlanta final comeback on train versus Virtus Pro showed how brave he was, you know, to make comeback calls like that. And then from there, you know, because he was the direct answer to Kerrigan, made the team work. Why would he make a roster move if his team one under his leadership why would they ever change anybody is the question here's the problem you've yeah you were doing so well until you fucked up and asked that rhetorical question because here's okay. the point Lon. is he ready if yeah. it was up to glaive there wouldn't ever have been an all-time great astralis glaive like all the other members of yeah. astralis wanted kirby to sign and that would have been the lineup for 2018. they never wanted good. and not only that after kirby then they wanted config their second choice, their third choice was Magisk. And the only reason they didn't get Kirby is because Kirby, on the day of the contract, signed with North. And then yeah, Config literally had the argument with me and told Zonic, I don't want to do media. Like, if, it, if essentially the best GMs in fucking Danish history are Kirby and Config. So, but maybe maybe we find out that at that point, Config could have been the player that, you know, you wrote that article about Config that, like, he never and never realized his potential. And, uh, you know, I actually think that under Glaive, under, Glaive, under that Astralis, he would have. I think we'll that, never know. Yeah, we'll never know. But I think that's because they did really well with Magisk. And so they didn't need to try to... Because here's, essentially, here's the problem, Launders. I get the vibe that people do want to do this bullshit, where it's like all of Carrigan's career counts. He's a failure when he didn't win. When Glaive objectively can't even make majors and is shitting the bed with, by the way, I'll tell you right now, I actually think Glaive is entering the Farney territory. You have two of the best players in the world on your team. I don't care what anything. They're two top 20 players right now. Blame F and Device. Every game can be relied upon to play at a top 20 yeah. level. You can't even get into me. You can't even win fucking online tournaments, mate. Like, that's, yeah, that's like whack as fuck. Because here's the problem. People want it to sound like it's still two months after the greatest Astralis, and that Glaive had his child yesterday. That's what everyone's been pretending for two years now. You've all yeah. been pretending, but he became a father years ago. Years ago. <laughs> you know, you know Electronic won everything with his child in the meantime. Like, what are we doing here? And also, by the way, I'll just throw this in there. That is the gave, shittest sports take of all time. You know why it's the shittest sports take? Because almost every actual real athlete won after having children. This is the dumbest take of all time, guys. We aren't even playing physical sports as a video game. But the fact that, essentially, the fact one of your sperms made it into an egg and then isn't in the room means you can't win in video games. <laughs> I don't know about that, homie. I don't know. That, thing, that one's really out there for me. You know? 
know what I mean? Like, I can accept a lot of takes, but that one's too far. Just because your gamete's gone out in the world doesn't make you not able to call a fucking side of Inferno Glaive. That doesn't, that doesn't work, mate. And also, spoiler, here's the other thing I'll just throw in there. I'll tell you what, this one will hurt your feelings, Lorders. Okay. No one's ever been overpaid to be a more overrated IGL in the history of Counter-Strike than Glaive. Oh, that hurts. Right, no, it? yeah, that's, that oh, that, that's actually the reason I think he's still playing, is because I think, like, he's been offered some unbelievable salary, even though, he, honestly, it feels like he probably would have stopped some time ago. Maybe. That's the other thing I also do. By the way, I also do think if we were at the old days of, like, where you made, like, a thousand a month, he probably would have retired after the Yeah. And so, era. and so, and so how do you, how do you reconcile that, Duncan? Because it's like, I don't need to, I just look at reality. It happened. What happened, happened. Well, and I don't, I don't worry about fantasies. Well, but if we so. just consider like, you know, a period of time where he's the best and you don't consider the time. By the way, not, I actually like, do consider Glaive the greatest. Like I haven't decided myself. What I think is it just each win makes it more interesting. Though. It's getting more spicier. Mm -hmm. That's why for me, that's also why I would like this major. Okay, so it's that close then for you? I think it's a one A, one B you could pick. Cool, cool. I don't mind right, it yeah. on that one, you know. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm like deciding what happens based on like how deep these teams go in the playoffs. Like what, you know, what happens with phase, like... Put it this way, I don't think there actually are that many undisputed. Put on it, like I don't think there are that many undisputed go angles. Like for example, you I, we did this on that time travel line. You can absolutely match like Fnatic from 2015 against the Great Astralis team. It's not an unfair yeah. comparison. They have different and strengths. Four, unbelievable. That's why I actually do think for real. I think simple is the only undisputed go aspect I have in this game. Like okay, but if Zaiwu wins the final, is is it still possible? Wow, that matter winning one final ever at the end. <laughs> I don't know about that. The problem with this, here's the problems. It, you're, you like accomplishments. You just said earlier, bro, simple makes yeah. the playoffs for fun. Like the joke yeah, is, yeah. I, I even said this before he won the major. Dude, even before he won the major, he was like the best major player ever in CS score. Like people like called Zero fell off years ago. Go look at simple from the beginning till the end. It's mental. Like a bad major for simple, by the way, it's like a 1.18 rating. That's like a failure. Yeah, yeah. No, we I just said earlier, that's player. like a good major for Z -Woo. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's so go it's unreal bit but the two problems with zai was just the no no like less such few, few opportunities to make playoffs and majors and sure. then also uh, such a high average individually so in terms of a, like awards he's actually got like top one and two you know arguably whatever for all of those years um and then also he for a while there he actually had a worse team than even like flamey's simple you know what i mean like he even he had a actual worse role oh the one with the kyoji misuta yeah of course of course yeah, that's totally so fine. like yeah. there's there's that as well so like this i think this major you know obviously his team's playing a little bit better now but he's technically carrying like a few frauds at the moment like if he won it'd be pretty insane no i'm with it, it would I mean, by the way that obviously would also make that convo at least interesting it'd be at yeah. least interesting then well, with the, I mean, with the with the with the Zywoo stuff versus Simple, I mean, I'd still like even if he beat even if he beat him in the major finals or something, and it was just some dominant performance. It's just that the the longevity aspect of Simple, it's like ten S tier trophies to then Zywoo having six, and Simple has a Grand Slam on top of that. He's been doing. I mean, he's carried teams that have also been pretty bad. Like, I mean, Zywoo wasn't able to get that lineup with Masuda and Kyojin to the playoffs or wait did they make they it did on the playoffs? stockholm they, one they, yeah, they lost they made it, yeah yeah they, that's right they, that, that they won right. i winter i think simple yeah. simple carried a liquid team to the finals you know like that's i feel like that's a pretty dude much, he almost unironically yeah. he almost took a dren who wasn't dren. hopping to the final of a major he almost got him there if it wasn't for cold yeah. zero no jump jumping no scope the second half of that cash game like he almost yeah. did that that that's mm. a real mate I think that's impossible, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I think also, also, I guess, against Navi, 2021, I feel like was probably the weakest field that we had to have an era. It was pretty in. bad, yeah. Yeah, because Vitality were the second best team of that year. The only other team that even won a trophy. So there's that as well. So And Simple's best, you know, had this major run, which is maybe the best MVP run in, 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 MB, in major history, but uh, also at a, quite a weak major. And also three out of four majors has had very bad finals. And that's, I think, a problem with a lot of our goats in this game is that kind of weak finals sometimes. No, I mean, I understand why, though. If you notice, by the way, it's actually the same in most sports and esports. It's because, unfortunately, when you have a format like this, 
This is actually why, if people don't know, I always pitch for like, I don't want it like this. I want it like tennis where you have like four grand slams and it's like, that's the angle. Because the more you have, the less it makes it like, this is all or nothing. You're a fucking loser or a greatest winner of all time. Like That pressure ruins even the great players, mate. It actually does. Like you can see in that final, like it's the reason why even people like Simple and Equal have had finals where they look like they were shitting themselves because like, bloody hell, it's just like, to all that great player, it doesn't matter if I fail this half of CS now. Like what? But that's kind of is how we treat it. So I think, I think the, the, the pressure we put on people is so crazy whereas if you go and look when there yeah. used to be three majors a year like there's pressure but people sort of know like God, I'm, I'm, if I'm in the best team I'm going to have two more chances this year like it's going to happen eventually you know how would how would the discussion shift and this is uh, just completely different topic but uh, for shift for you guys if Twist versus Elige and a GOAT if if Twist were to win mm -hmm. this major as like say second best player on phase I yeah I think uh I actually listened to your guys' discussion, so I know that Thorin won. Even though you were all <laughs> you were on fucking Ma here's the thing, Launders. I actually know you, Launders. So here's what I know. I okay. know that you were on Maui's side the whole time, but you begrudgingly had to give it up. That I had some good angles and some good points, and I did have yeah, some yeah, good yeah. attack I, points. I, I, I know yeah, you, right. mate. I know you. I, I was because I actually, I obviously course, really rate. I rate accomplishments a lot, and the double grand. Oh, by the way, it low key did hurt your feelings at the beginning when we were like, and Stewie was never even in the discussion. I bet that I'm, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. That's when he wanted to call in so badly, Maui. Like, wait, wait, can I? Can it patch in at all? Because it's we're at the point where Stewie's <laughs> now underrated. Okay, he so he's is, not he overrated is point, anymore. Mate. He is. Yeah, because like people don't even know how much money he's made. In the they actually like, here's the like, problem. Obviously, my problem was they acted like he was he was a legion. He was the star player of all those teams. Now they act like he was actual trash in all those lineups. Like he wasn't fucking bad in the Cloud Nine Liquid lineups. Like oh, he was entering, basically before we went online, he was a totally calling. fine player and he was a good player. Yeah. Even yeah, of course. And of course. Uh, yes, yeah. I mean, like. Without Stewie, we, like North America never has a major. Like, just think about that. It's just you know, Here's the thing, is one thing we, but just prestige wise, I will say it would be if, North American history, right? Not even just CSGO. Yeah, if if they somehow win and Twist is actually like a contributing part and does really big work, yeah, maybe that'll tip it over. Obviously, the angle would be you yourself put the eye of the liquids even in the mix. What if Elise wins? Oh, if Elise wins and he's MVP, right? it's I think it's pretty hard to argue for Twist. Actually, I think that's a tipping point. Also, I mean, I think the discussion was made because it's very close in fact like, you know what there's an angle we haven't even thought of guys reframe it it could be phase versus team liquid in the finals so it could be elise versus twist that could actually happen <laughs> it's not impossible like that's not totally important by the way yeah. spoiler that's more plausible than the last major's final what fucking outsiders against heroic like you could have phase against team liquid as long as they get the right bracket it's not impossible it would also and, be uh, hype as fuck wouldn't it is it fair to say that we've had there are more teams right now that could possibly be in the finals than we've ever i had think so possible? yeah yeah because this really is the only one I've ever seen where, like, it's not like every, every major has to have, like, a dominant number one. But normally it's like, I usually say there's normally, like, three teams you could pick and you're going to very yeah. likely pick the winner. Like, this one I really do think, like I said, they're not even here. But if Cloud9 was here, they'd at least be a dark horse for fuck's sake. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think this one could be the wildest major ever. It's why low-key, the other reason I also did those tweets, Lord, is because actually part of me... Obviously, is the story now. I want it to be Zero versus Simple or Nico versus Carrigan, and you end on some big, like, you know, let's get one big storyline, like we're saying, like Nico gets his major. But I'm so scared it's going to end on some shit one. Like, it will just be like, and here we are, Heroic versus fucking whatever, G2. Will it be Huxy or Cadian, the best player ever at the end of CS Go? Like, no, I don't know if I can handle it. It could be worse than that, you know. OG are yeah. doing really well recently. <laughs> it could be nine. It, it could, could be, be nine. nine. <laughs> also, how insane would that stat be, by the way, if when CSGO ends, you were like, oh, at the end of the game, all these IGLs made the major after the player break, uh, the online era. You had Carrigan from Denmark. Of course, you had... Uh Fucking Cadian from Denmark. Then you had Huxy from Denmark. Maybe you have Snappy now. Glaive, not even in the mix. Not even, in the mix. not even available. Fifth best IGL of the post-online era. So they could run, okay? <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, it's it is good that James got his. It does it does feel like everyone's just been getting theirs in the last couple of years, which is cool. And it just again. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I just because I, I, I am here on the show, so I have to push back on that. When you say that, I know what okay. you mean, Lord. Is I know in your mind what you mean by that. But I'll just okay. reconnect you to an earlier topic. You know when we talked about how Guardian never got to win a major Lord. Is yeah, it yeah. good that Jim 
what a major in that context. Like, here's the thing. I'll give Jim the IGL a major. Jim the Orpa could fuck right off. The Jim idea he has a major. Offer? He wasn't. There's, that's, there's the other thing, though, Londers. That tournament was a mad outlier in his career. Yeah, I, don't think, I don't think play. he's ever played that well. He played so, and also they had played bad opponents. Like, he actually did genuinely. He, he deserved the MVP of that. But, like, for the rest of his career, it's wild he's won a major. It's so crazy. Think about yeah, how many yeah. great players didn't. And, like we say, Guardian's probably the best example. Like, but, but Guardian's James, like a top two Orpa ever. Like, <laughs> James to me is like snappy level. Like he doesn't get the pet best the pick of players, but he's brought them up. You sure. know, so it's like almost as unlikely, I guess. Is yeah, like if Ents won, it would be like wow, like Ents won a major, like couldn't have been that good. And that's sort of the same feeling as like Jane winning sure. it. But still happy for him as a like caller for his story. Is there anyone like the, the sad part about Guardian is that he's technically still playing, right? He's just not good anymore. <laughs> I don't know if he's even on that team anymore, wasn't he? <sighs> Yeah, I he was on like a team recently, I know, but like that might have been as a stand-in or something. I think, unfortunately, I'm not certain. Yeah, he might be. I believe is he is. Any, is there anyone playing. else? Is there anyone else that I missed that that's like you know that we we all expected over the years to win but never actually? No, got no, because I remember. Here's the thing: I actually did an article in something like 2018 or 2019 where I did like you know like greatest players never to win. And if you ever go look at my top ten, dude, about seven of them have won now because it's all players on like it's like Twists, Carrigan, Nico, fucking Rain. Like you can imagine, it's all the names on that list. So basically, mm -hmm. most of them have won. Actually, that's actually one of the cool things about the last couple of years. We actually mm -hmm. have sort of narratively knocked off a lot of the cool storylines, and we're not left with so many haunting ones. So actually, when you get down to it now, sadly, Guardian is the big like. He's, the, he's basically the odd one out. He's the only, like, yeah. aside from Nico, he's the only, like, like you know, once, like, best player in the world type guy never to have won one, you know? Like, even Zeus got his, dude. Imagine that tweet was still <laughs> pinned. Oh, my God. His was mad fraudulent, too, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only That's the only problem I have with this whole majors thing, by the way, as well, yeah. is we're acting like that, like... It, it's equal for each team to win the major. They're equally hard. Yeah. Like when you look at it, it is wild that no team liquid lineup ever won a major, but then like fucking outsiders and gambit won a major. Like really, mm -hmm. really bro. That or for act 2013, like the bad one without even all of my Like really that won a major too. Like these majors are all equal. Are they guys? Come on. Uh, does, does Nico need to win this to be the goat? Um, to be the goat rifler. Here's the sad thing. Launders. I actually think by the way, the angle people are missing is this. Dude, if Nico actually won a major, and here's the problem. Obviously, now in his team, he could also win and be like, like, honestly, he could carry the game or fucking yeah. Hunter or JKS kind of, but let's imagine he wins, but he's real Nico. Like he, like, like he did at the Stockholm. If they'd have won that, that would just be Nico, mate. Like, he was just carrying the fuck out of that major. If they win the major and he carries, here's the real discussion. Bearing in mind, he's a rifler. Why can't he be the GOAT if he wins a major? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, why like, not? He's a rifle. You, you, like, I think uh, he has to do way more. You'd give him like a plus yeah. 20 stats boost to compare him to the offers, and then you would have the discussion. And, and we always say on the show as well, Launders, people, I'm I'm so sure people have had their brain broken by the old Nico. They think he's like a perma lurker who's just playing for stats. Like, he probably well, does more than any rifle in years. Yeah, yeah. Like, the amount of like, dude, even throws flashes for people for fuck's sake. And he's yeah. Nico. Like, I don't think anyone, I actually, it's why it's actually a shame because in this era with G2 where they didn't win anything until recently, it might have been his best period like his all-around games really really stepped up like and it looks like he did adapt to having worse teammates and do more jobs in the team like i would have mad props for him if he won like sure. again that's one of those ones laws it's like the it's like the carrigan versus glaive one now i'd probably give it to glaive but the point is it's interesting if you can at least make an argument for the other guy like he's in the convo that'd be a pretty cool one to me because i yeah. always thought by the way if it wasn't for the things like the boston major Nico was, if people don't know, Nico was supposed yeah. to be the true rival for Simple. Not fucking Zewu. That was just some yeah, shit yeah, that came yeah, along yeah. years later. It was supposed to be like Simple and Nico. Like, essentially, who has like the fucking stud super freak and then who, who can win the championship with them? Like in my dream, they both just get teams built around them. They battle every year, you know, which they sort yeah. of did, but didn't in the wrong way, you know. Yeah, he's probably got the most years where if there wasn't offers, he would just be number one player, right? I think he 20, would be, yeah. 20, yeah. 21, 22, yeah. yeah. Uh, Shiro just popped up and then Zaiwu popped up and then just made his life worse. I even think really the, the most underrated one, dude, is easily 2018. Everyone forgets, they remember, like, right, Simple was godlike and then Device won all the events, right? True, In the middle, true. with that like, really messy phase lineup that eventually kicked Carrigan and was starting to have problems. Dude, Nico was just carrying the whole time in that year. It was unbelievable. Like, he even won events over Astralis. People don't know. Like, he, he fucking, he was, he was so good. It was unbelievable. And that's, they kicked they kicked Carrigan in the beginning of the year, right? Because that's No, when they no, they the kicked major. him around. The, no, you're, you're getting it the wrong way around. They kicked him oh, like okay. a couple of months after Face It. So it was like two thirds of the way into the year. Uh, Oh, okay, okay. And then uh, also, okay, so then what about so Twist? If Twist wins this, then like, does that take, does that change the story for him as the as Rifler? Cause, I like, think it could be the NA goat. He could be up there with all the great Riflers, right? 
because I, I think NA Goat would be locked probably just because he would probably have to have good performances on individually as well as winning oh, the major. Also imagine, but yeah. then, you know, he's transcended North America at this point, right? Like he's got like longevity. He's got the results. He's carried not, he's not just come over to European team to get carried. He's like done his fair share of like True. really big performances, iconic moments, like peaks and everything the, like the that. The two grand slam angle. Yeah. So, so how good is, how good is twist in terms of like compared to Nico and, you know, in terms of riflers in that case? Uh, I mean, as an individual in terms of contributions, I don't think he comes anywhere close, even though actually in terms of hardware, he ha he has more than Nico right oh, now. He's he, has, yeah. he has the major over him. It's 10 S tier trophies to nine for Nico. He doesn't have like By the way, three to yeah. five you, you can though, go yeah. look this up, but I always said this. Now he's obviously won kind of eats it, but even with that, mate, if, when you go on that page on HL TV that shows the trophies for Nico Lauders, mate, that's like some fucking Jesus wept shit. Like, it's all just blasts and shit. It's all garbage. Yeah. Like, you look at, he's got every <laughs> banana cup that ever existed it's sad as fuck oh, isn't it like that's, it's, so that's why i'm glad he won the cattle like fucking helmet where are the big fucking lands like his lands really are like ah oh, congrats another blast brilliant yeah, that's and he's got yeah, and by the way he's not even win the real blast he's win the blaster ones those chairs in here the, <laughs> the old ones the, the pro series yeah the old ones yeah. back in the day Miami, he's winning those. madrid yeah yeah. That was brutal. I need him to have some real fucking hardware. Like, actual. Because the problem is, he's way too good a player to have that resume. Like, this. Top five for you, four years as when, a right. When, by the way, when you look at that trophy thing, you even think there's like a bog or something. You think, oh, no, surely. Like, there's got to be. Wait, what, did he ever, like. But then you remember, like, not no colognes. There's only this one card. Or, like, it's actually mm. sad. It's actually sad how many fucking ones he's bobbed. Like, here's what's sad. If Nico doesn't win this major, I'll just say it right now. I won't say it, but other people will think he's one of the greatest chokers of all time. Like, think about that thing where he'd been in, like, four Cavite files or something like dude people will think he's a choker because sadly it'll be that memory from boston everyone remember and even dude i always think the saddest one about the stockholm one is people just remember at the end of the game when he missed that deagle mate he was carrying that fucking, fucking tournament final, yeah, if they'd have won yeah, he was the reason why but because of yes. that one moment at the end which let navi back in the door it it feels in people's brain like they think he like fed in the final or something he didn't like he wasn't he wasn't a god like but he was very good he was very good in that tournament for sure that whole playoffs as well. He was like, he was yeah. smurf. He's the only reason they beat Iraq, mate. You can go watch that match. That's why I posted it the other day. Like, <laughs> that's like a match where it's like, if I'm a rock at the end, I even told them it's like the bar. I was like, mate, I know it sounds fucked up, but I would never blow smoke up your ass. But after that game, you should actually just think like, well, we didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> like, what do you want us to do? Like, we played our game. Some one guy just beat us. And by the way, spoiler, they even admit private, like, yeah, he did. Like, nothing you could do against any of the fucking kills he was getting and the moves he was making. So I think it'd be so sad if he gets remembered as like the greatest choker ever or whatever. Like, oh, come on, bro. Yeah. Especially because, remember, he's also got that Carrigan angle. He's doing it all in international teams. Mm -hmm. He's not off in fucking some team with all his country. I mean, sort of is now in a way because he's got Hunter in that angle or whatever. But it's not the same as like being in a fucking old Danish lineup for your whole career, is it? Come on. It's got to be way more comfy. Can we open up the yeah, like, Monacy side of this discussion, though? Go on. Like, where, where, if, if they win and it's Monacy that gets MV major MVP... Obviously, Zaiwu has a little bit more consistency in term and longevity there, but that's already an achievement that Zaiwu doesn't have. If he goes deep, if he actually True. performs well, then he'll probably have a better overall major record or performance than than Zaiwu. I mean, he would be one for one with majors. He would have one lost major at Antwerp. They didn't play Rio, and then if he wins his next major, like this guy, if you go one for one on majors, I think that's got to be like how many people have that kind of stat? <laughs> you're saying that like he's going like to like you're saying like yeah. he's going to like retire afterwards and be like fifty percent record at majors. I retire like yeah, the greatest 100%. win rate of all time. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, but I also it's just ushering in the new era because I think the eye test has already shown us that Montessi's got to be one of the, like, the top five operas right now. Sure, statistically, like a Shiro, Zaiwu Simple are better than him. But like, I think he's right there knocking at the door. Oh, by the and way, how, how, how much does it hurt when you think of this? Just hold this thought in your mind for a second. And don't fight it. Don't, don't resist Londres. Just hold it in your mind for a second and understand this is reality and it can't be changed. Shiro and Axel leave CSGO doing almost fuck all at the majors. They had that one semis run because they played fucking Fury or whatever, like in Stockholm. The game's going to end with them never getting a chance to even win the major. Yeah, Isn't that fucking gross? Pathetic, yes. Oh, and how long have I been calling it? out Nafoni for, for doing this to them? Okay, yeah. this is why this is why I've been on this campaign for as long as I have because I think it's criminal that they're not playing at these events well, and they're yeah. being held back by a system and IGL slash captain that's been doing this to them. So the only I mean, problem the only difference for me between me and you on our opinions of, of Nafani is I think we both think he's the problem, but I don't think 
that I, I don't, I didn't, first of all, I didn't believe technically that you could replace him with anyone like Boomich or anyone specifically that would instantly okay. make them better. So that was one thing. And then the other thing is that I believed that they were simply, I think you brought this up, Maui, that they were, you know, 2015 TSM with Kerrigan and that you were one move away from like solving their problems. Whereas I just looked at the solution as Nafani going to therapy. Do you know what I mean? Like not, not trying to find a new IGL because okay. I looked at, I looked at a cloud nine. I don't actually have a big problem with their system. And I, when I see, when I, in my mind, I think about playoffs of with cloud nine here at Paris. And I think about all the potential matchups phase, um, phase Navi, uh, vitality G2. They've all had fucking amazing games. Yeah, these great, teams. I, I actually believe their system is, is good enough. I think the empty flash assist is actually sort of, complimentary to their style even though it doesn't always win them games lots of teams have different flaws that they you know come up in the stats they still win versus top teams so i just disagree about their system not being good enough um but i i think that basically the fact that they folded versus mouse and rio the fact that they folded versus phase the rmr they folded versus Cl uh, vitality inside of the same series at uh, rio or whatever it was this shows that mentally they got destroyed but they were in all of those games truly capable of just dominating their opponents dude they could have chosen zero the vitality one that's that's what <laughs> I, real? So I yeah i don't think their system my opinion is is the issue as much as it's the, the mental game with nafany but i do agree that's now i think well it's both it's those are both reasons for me i mean the system is one part <laughs> but it's also just the the fact that he's choking as an individual and and mentally too as a captain like this is why like the decoupling of cap being a captain and a leader or like like it's weird because everybody just thinks hard tactics but it's like it has been also the system but also the style and the belief in the system that makes it so that his calling somehow just falls off a cliff in some of these games like the mouse one for example the mouse loss was a system loss for me that was like okay you guys actually aren't throwing nades at exertion and in the quarterfinals and he's just mopping you up at cave every single round that is 100 percent the system for why they couldn't unseat exertion from cave but i do see like in the vitality one they lost the ct side so that uh, that isn't the system yeah, like that was, hero didn't get any kills yeah. on that ct side you know so yeah so yeah. But, so it's like it's both it's both but i also think that my my other thing is that like i don't want nafany to be the leader of the team but he's actually a pretty cool like you know disruptive entry fragger space taker and i think that he has some value on there that's why i mean that's why in some ways i was always like you know if you brought in a chopper boomich jerry whatever mm -hmm. then you could still keep Nafany theoretically. You could have replaced Inters. You could have re you could replace Buster mm -hmm. now, and just bringing an in-game leader. And if it's still Nafany that stays, I'm in some ways I'm okay with it. But just don't let this guy lead a team of mentally fragile kids. Oh, that's I, interesting. I, I just like that. the way Londres always had like has like a mad twist on his angle. So his angle, Maui, is he doesn't agree with you that Nafani's system doesn't work because Nafani's system's great. It's just if Nafani could fundamentally change who he is and how his brain works, then his system would be also. Awesome. What the fuck is that like? Like you actually are arguing basically that Nafani shouldn't be the IGL. Well, you just want argument you just want different Nafani post therapy. No, here's the problem with that one though. The okay. problem with that one is this Launders. It was only in the choking moments Carrigan had a problem. The rest of the games he was one of the best. Like Nafani has some of these issues in normal games too. What like individually or? I think as a caller. Okay. To me, I think Axel and Shiro have to do so Axel especially, I think, is the most unfairly fucking scrutinized player in World Counter Strike. Because what happens is, when it reminds me of Config on that bad Astralis, they lose the game and they'll actually have had like good stats for a loss. And people will be like, why didn't you just go plus 30? Like, I'm not fucking God. What are you talking about? Yeah, like, you, what, you know, in this, maybe I didn't have the chance in the game. Maybe the guy called like shit. Maybe we were too passive. Maybe we never had any fucking money because we did stupid buys. Like, oh, there's all sorts of reasons why. If you're like an aggressive rifle, it's guys surely you all understand like a passive AWP can create kills more easily than an aggressive rifle that's why in the section earlier I was giving Nico insane props like I think it's impossible what he does with a rifle yeah. so like yeah, the joke is we're just saying to Axile like I mean by the way notice the other player that I mentioned there Nico also gets mega scrutinized like guys you're telling me you know the roles and then you have these arguments where you just ignore the roles like Axile and Nico are fucking unbelievably good riflers I don't it's very rare that they ever let the team down for me like yeah they can't carry every game you need help to do that in those roles. No, I did. I did just say that, like, oh, sure, didn't get like any kills on that That's true. side. But, but I, but I, but I actually, you know, I don't want to ever over scrutinize them. I think that is really annoying when people do that too. Where like, like they, yeah, they could do more. Like people say the same thing about Zaiwu, but it's like. Like, is that the first problem with the team? Like, no, exactly, like, exactly. So, yes, no, that's a yeah. good example because yeah, it's true. Zewu could be better, but 
It's not like he could also do this and win all the tournaments. Like he doesn't have to yeah. do any more, does he? Like why does he have to be the absolute best ever just to win a, a trophy? Like yeah. that's a pretty unreasonable expectation, guys. Wait, let me yeah. let me wrap it back to the the Monacy point that we opened this with, though. Like what 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 would be the case? Like how would it affect his legacy if he's able to actually win? this major as finals MVP because a lot of events he is he is the best player or well, here's the cool team. thing to me if he does it like I already think he's the only person ever deserved this stage. he he is the next simple if he could just win a fucking major as the MVP at this young in his career like that would be amazing like here's the thing for me his is more like it sets up CS2 if you know what yeah, I mean yeah that's it yeah, that would be the cool it. angle like think about like simple fell off a little bit so Lee Monacy wins the majors the MVP at the end like mate, that would be fucking game on for CS2 yeah, I think Monacy is the only player that I like in terms of movement. When I watch him play, he's actually teaching me new things about the game yep. that I'm like embarrassed to not know as someone who spent so much time learning about it. So the fact that he's 18 knows so much more about like all these things and not only knows about movement, but can execute like flawless oh, mechanics are bonkers, all the they? time. So like he's set up to be the kid who's just like goes in the CS2, still incredibly hungry to, hungry to learn everything. He's going to fucking fly. You know, he's going to learn so much more than everyone else with just enough experience that he hasn't seen enough, you know, which is a good thing. And then in CS2, probably just decimate everyone who gets a little lazy, doesn't want to learn every little new detail. So he'll be flying. I think he's going to be the best player in CS2. That would be, I don't know if that's a bold prediction or something, but that's what I feel. Oh, you already said it, next simple, right? So. Because here's the other thing. When you say that to me, you're not just meaning like it's a really good Eastern European opera. There has to be that. The idea is you're sort of saying he has the potential ceiling that Simple did. That's the only player I've ever seen that did. Like yeah. the Zewu yeah. one, like the problem with his is like it, it's not really a, that good a comparison. Like he sort of just is Simple's rival. So in a way, he's not the next. He just is at the same time as Simple. Like the Monacy one actually makes sense. Because remember, they were trying to... Everyone forgets this. You all like to delete this from your memory. Everyone was trying to say Shiro was. It's like... Mate, the style couldn't be more different, could it? Like, almost no. every aspect of their style Dude, is, like, Shiro is not elite opposite. when it comes to opening kills, whereas Simple... Okay, Shiro is, is not, a, not a fraud or anything, but, like, when it comes to comparing him to, like, Nico, Simple, Zaiwu, or Monacy, all these guys are taking opening kills to the same level as your favorite entry fragger, and yet have elite-level stats. No one else does that. And Shiro and Shiro and Brokey are, like, yeah. fucking 15% opening attempts. Like, they're barely putting themselves out there. They have some of the most inflated eco-kill stats of any of the top players. So, like, they're not as three-dimensional as some of your other, like, also, mate, all-time I'll players. I'll tell you right now, when people do that thing where they talk about, like, it, it is an angle I like to use, that angle of, like, if you're a great player, if the game's, like, essentially, if you know the game's being lost or the flow of the game's going against your team, you sort of just take the, ch you say, like, essentially, I'm going to break the system. I'm, I'm just going to take over this game. I know people think that's just, like, sports ball take of, like, people thinking of old Michael Jordan. It's not. Like, I have seen people like Simple and Nico do that so many times over the years. So all I'll say yeah. is this. The difference between Shiro and Simple is, is back in the day when they're both on bad teams or flawed teams is I have seen Simple on those Zeus Navi teams, for real, take a hero AK, everyone else had a tech nine, run down fucking lower ramp on inside train on T side and just frag the whole site and take it over. Like someone like Shiro wouldn't even conceive of that. They would sit in the back with the op, in this case, they wouldn't have an op, it'd be an eco round. They'd just be on that and they'd just run in, get the bomb down or not, die. Like they, they, they just play, it's why I always say it about Stown, they play within the system or within the game. Yeah. People like that, I know it's the problem with it is you have to have a mad ego to do it, but if you were as good as people like Nico and Simple, you have the license to do it. You can actually do something in the game we can't conceive of. So just do it, homie, you know? Just break that's the why, game. That's why stats can be so misleading and why some people... I, I feel like the whole, like, Shiro is the best opera angle right now. Well, I, it almost feels like if you actually took the stats that he gets to the wins that he finds, like, it, it's less... There's less of a correlation to... Because with Simple, if he puts up some kind of, like, high stat game, it's all impact. It's not like he's actually just getting exit kills, saving the op, like, always just, like, you know, getting those, like, doing a little bit of economic damage, which we all can value, but, like, the stats don't draw a difference between those two things, whereas for Shiro, he's always trying to, like, do a little bit of chip damage to, like, you know, it, it's not it's not like it's bad or it's, it's just, like, empty stats completely, but compared to simples, they are empty calories. So I, that's why, like... Sure, give give me give me simple with a 1.2 rating versus Shiro with a 1.35. And I'm taking simple as the more winning player between those two. Oh, by the way, there was one other name I actually just remember we should also put on that longevity list. Rain. Oh, true. Yeah. That's the one Both. we all forget though, innit? You like went under the radar. He's played on phase this entire time. He's the only player who's played the entire roster. Because mate, in this particular lineup, the Rops era of phase. 
That's fucking found money, mate. I thought Rops could be really good. I know Twist can be good. I didn't know Brokey could be good. It's good. I know if you told me Rain's going to have like multiple... Dude, he might have had five tournaments where he's had like a 1.1 rating. And he's supposed to be the fourth best player. That is so OP. It's unbelievable, isn't it? And, and remember, here's another player where, forget the stat line, his 1.1 not is still playing all the scenarios, right? And fragging. Like he's not he's not going to be a liability in that context. He's actually, essentially, you, it's like when JKS did that kind of eater. Like you can't lose if the fucking fourth best player has stats like that, mate. Like you're just unbeatable yeah. at that I'll, point in time, aren't you? I'll personally say, like, I, I called for Rain's head at one point. I really regret that because, like, when I look at the look at open and we talk about opening kills for all these five players, you've got three fucking selfish, lazy players compared to Rain and Kerrigan. Twist, Rops, and Brokey are all basically never attempting opening duels. Swiss is getting closer, but Rops and Brokey are just like way in the back. You know what I mean? And like, well, most other teams have an offer they can at least share that responsibility with, or a really aggressive star rifler they can do that with, whether it's your Kinder or Nico, something like that. Rain and Kerrigan, if they don't open, phase do not win. Win. So Rain's consistency has been paramount, and major MVP just shows shows how. All I'm going to say is this, guys. I'll just throw this out there. Why isn't anyone doing any narratives for if the reigning major champions repeat? Well, that just not, shows how bad there. it's fucking. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, they're not even there, yeah. That, dude, that everything about that's whack. Bit, oh, well, yeah, I yeah. think that's. I think that's a failure in the the whole system. Actually, <laughs> I think that's a failure in the major cycle in in general. You should be inviting the past champion back. Like, I don't think. I don't think outsiders should have had to play through the RMR to get here. Like, come on, even for narrative sake or whatever. Like, securing. It, just think about it. Also, like this, if you're a team that wants to secure that sticker money for the next time, like that's such a big reason that people compete in this space is for sticker money if you could just give the champion just literally the champion the security that they're going to get sticker money one more cycle through then you're going to have more orgs that are a little bit more invested in this space because that is just so whack to me that like I can, like you say, even if you're bad, by the way, narratively, you just invite them just so someone can beat them and go, right, well, at least the champion's mm -hmm. eliminated now. Like, it's so, imagine some fan tuning in if you only watched the majors. You were like, right, where's the outsiders team? Like, well, first of all, it's called Virtus Pro now, but secondly, they, they didn't even make it. It's like, what? what? It's like, no, they're not even there. Like, they're not even in the tournament. Like, oh, wow. Mate, that's nonsense. That was a weird-ass <laughs> thing with, like, Chiron, yeah. though, in the middle of that tournament where he was doing really well, honestly. <laughs> And then just got cut. And it was like, I, I, I talked to Yakinder and he said, like, there was one point in, in on uh, Virtus Pro where James told him, like, he sighed during a match or, like, gave up when it was, like, really close and they lost the map. And then James kind of scolded him and said, if you have that attitude, take yourself off the team. And that's it. Okay. And then Yakinder fixed his shit completely and, like, kept playing. So I was imagining that situation with Chiron in the RMR. But I still can't believe that during the tournament, oh, wild, you'd make it? a substitution, like, What's, you know, fucking Norbert could have been playing Minecraft for the last three months. Like, who knows how even fresh he was to be able to, like, come into the system. So that was a really weird decision. And I would assume it's, like, Jame who has responsibility for that. I have one more angle. I don't know. I don't think you guys covered it. I think that the Apex story is really, really interesting as an individual. You mean if he um, wins as an IGL? Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Be spicy Having one sure. before as an entry fragger and, like, to have a whole... Also, if you win, please just on stage, just call out Nell. Just be like, hey, Nell, hold this L, motherfucker. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I would be giving him too much. <laughs> no, wouldn't actually, no, no the sad thing is, actually, if you did that, you'd get really happy when it's be mentioned on stage at the last minute. Yeah, exactly. actually, don't do that, Apex. Don't ruin all of yeah. CS history with a stupid sure. page out against Nell from 1VPFR or whatever it's called. Like, yeah. 1PV, I think it is. I can't remember which way around it is. Push one push of you. Uh, one. The the um the apex angle though for him to have a complete career pivot from entry fragger to in game leader to be more or less chastised for his in game leading at the very beginning of it like you know like there was Richard there was a handful of people that were like like you, they just couldn't see it they couldn't believe that apex could actually become a reasonable in game leader after Alex left Vitality because when Alex left also it did feel like this roster is going to be doomed for a little bit but they actually stayed pretty competitive throughout that whole time they had a they had a couple dips in form here and there but i but i have said it on like the last hot take point made that i think that Apex right now, to me, is still, he's like the fifth best in-game leader in the space right now. And I think that if he's able to win Rio, win Major in, an, in a period where it's very hard to have consistency as a top-tier team, then you just have to recognize that, sure, his players can be okay, but, like, are we really thinking that Dupree and Majisk look like major champions in their current form right now? I think that's pretty questionable. So it would be Apex that's able to wrap it all up and make sure that they're able to play competitively. I've got a little bit. I, I I actually agree that right now he's he's that good, but I actually have a pretty scalding take on Vitality in this regard. Like I think that 
without without Zaiwu, it's total obscurity for Apex and Vitality in general. They never even put together the money to buy players like Magisk and Dupree, and they don't even have a chance to get close to getting someone like Spinks, and they never see any success at all. And we have no good French teams, period. So I, I think that for me, it's uh, Zaiwu has literally bought them years to be able to have a chance for Apex to learn how to be a good IGL, but like. Uh, other than that, has been very slow at getting good, and up until about like literally three months ago, I would say they were like pretty much frauds as a team. Well, okay, okay. With with that, with that, uh, the, the hypothetical there is also like, does Blade even look like a good coach if he doesn't have simple? Like, I I don't even you know it's I kind think of so because you have like players that have come into the team that. Like, I don't think Bit is anything without Blade, for example. Whereas I can't say anything like that for Apex, where, like, Masuda got worse year over year. Um, like, nobody on the team played better than I expected them to playing under well, Apex. Well, Kyojin, Kyojin looked like tr hot trash before and even worse trash after he left Vitality. The system that he was in there actually made Kyojin a serviceable Tier 1 player. He wasn't good, but he was, he was able to win an, an event with them, so... I, I think there's like a little bit of a debate there. Like he helped, he helped make, the, he helped make the guy that, I mean, Kyojin has actually just done fuck all for like his entire career before and after. Yeah, but that was also his best team. So it's not good enough for me that you're okay. Whereas like with Blade, you have like ultra success stories or like overall really, really good consistency. And then also the best the team that's ever been. But I just don't think that exists at all without without Zaiwu. And I don't think Zaiwu has anyone else to credit for that, personally. I don't think Zaiwu has Apex to credit for that. I know he said, like, he's not really learned anything from X-Taz when they were playing with him. So I just, and I believe that. And I believe that. He's in that simple category, so I understand. But the players around him, and that's why I think, like, Zaiwu's actually had the worst team that even Simple did, which was unfathomable compared to, like, Simple's 2018 with, like, Flamey and uh, Zeus and stuff like that. I know it's scorching, but that's how I feel. I just feel like Vitality is totally irrelevant without him. Also, by the way, here's the other angle. Bear in mind, obviously, it is on the table like G2 could win, but we've done all the other big angles, etc. I'll tell you what would be a fucking mental angle to NCS go on. Dude, that means if they actually if G2 won the major, fucking little JKS will have two cavities in a major <laughs> to end the game on. Like yeah. what? Like, listen, he was a good player, but he was never that good. Like, no one had him on the table for that. He was that. so overrated yeah. on Renegades. He was like a 1.08 star player. He was just the best player in Australia. No, that's so. why, in a way, it, look, it, on one level, I have to say mad props to him. I always thought, actually, personality-wise, he was the obvious player that could have shifted from, like, star to another role because he always had, like, a very, very, like, cool personality that people don't know. He wasn't, like, a mad egotist. But the idea you actually did it and then found the success is wild. Because remember, you know, back in the day, Launders, when they had the first one with Sponge, etc., loads of us said back then, like, why? And they, they waited until now to do it. But, like, back then, JKS and Azza always should have just gone to the NA teams, you know? It should have been, mm -hmm. like, Team Liquid Azza and, like, Cloud9 J. Or something like that. Should have just done that years ago. Like, like try because as you're saying, you can't be the best on like a, a team, but like that, you're not even like star numbers. Like, because as you're saying, even if you fragged out, they were never going to win a major off that in Renegades for fuck's sake. Yeah, for Renegades, and yeah, he pulled he pulled his weight after a huge break as well. Which I Maui, I heard you talking about this. I don't know if it was with uh, Duncan as well, but talking about players who have made comebacks. And JKS being one of like five or four players who have actually made survived a giant break, which is actually one of the most impressive things you can do in Counter Strike. Because sure. it feels like every year is like magnitudes harder than the last in terms of the nuance in the meta, as a lot of players have talked about. So credit for to JKS for that too. Like he's like imagine how good he'd be in a previous era with his new skills. Like yeah, maybe a top ten rifler. Yeah, and the fact is, like, he actually, uh, I think he learned a lot from Complexity, even though he looked pretty bad on that team, of just what it takes to win to be a player that, actually now, when you watch him play for G2, I'd say that he plays a little bit more selflessly than on Complexity, because Complexity, he was playing a little bit of a bait fest, a bait off between him and Blame F, like, who could be the last person alive? Like, it was almost like they were betting each other $100 who would die last the every single round. Urge to bait, and, yeah. and still trying to actually win rounds in some sense. But, um, but now it's like, he can... He's rarely ever... He's not the first in, like, ever, but he's a really good closer, and he's not actually... Um, taking that space away sometimes from like Monacy. Monacy is also a guy that probably wants to be last alive a lot of the time and Hunter too. And like, it never feels like, ah, oh, wow. Like, like the whole, uh, remember when like 
Blame F was joining uh, the Astralis lineup, and him and Zipnix would also have bait offs. I'm, I'm recognizing now that was actually a Blame F problem, not not maybe a JKS problem, because he's on yeah. two separate lineups had these sort of weird situations. Whereas JKS seemed to slot in pretty quickly and understand his role and what it took to win. Oh, he entered that first Katowice on phase. Yeah, that was the thing, right? He that's true too. Actually, he took Reigns' roles. Then, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's true. Show more versatility. Blame F could never. That's except on eco rounds. <laughs> on eco rounds. On anti ecos, yeah. By the way, even though we actually dismissed it early on, like the whole angle that Heroic's going to win, obviously I should actually do the legit one of like if they did win, not only just for the angle I said of like Heroic was a great team, they played great Counter Strike. It would also, let's be real, I do think low key, this is sort of what the whole, this is why when you said earlier that like Heroic's so likable launders. I know what you mean. Like, for example, if people don't know, even when he was actually a villain, I actually did like Cadian as a person. I always thought he was fairly cool. I knew him at events and stuff. I knew he wasn't quite who he portrayed on camera anyway and some of that. Yeah, yeah. But even with that said, like, part of what I don't really like about the last run of Heroic is it always feels like Cadian thinks he is in the movie of his life, but now, and he's trying to act the scene out of when he wins, and it's all of his story, and it's like his mom's crying, and then he's there, and he did it, and they said he wouldn't make it, and they said he wouldn't be good, and he couldn't be an audience. It's like, bro, how much of this is just you? So the problem is, I will say, if I take that part of sound that I don't like, if this was the movie, then it does end with him winning the major, of course it does. Like, that makes the... If this is the movie of Cadian's life, it starts with him at the fucking kind of eats where I get kicked out and he replaces me on the desk because he was on dog shit mouse that could never win a game then. And he goes all the way through his career where he was on, like, the bad north and the fucking... Everyone forgets when he was on Rogue in NA briefly. And then he comes back. He's on the online era where you're winning online. By the way, by definition, just like we all did with Gambit and Cloud9, you're all waiting to hit on those guys the second they get to land because they did it online. And then on top of that, you potentially cheated slash your coach cheated slash multiple times cheating things involved that made everyone hit. if at the end of that you actually win the major as the IGL and Orpa you can't really ask for a better fucking end to the movie can you like you don't need like a Marvel post credit scene at that point in time do you like it's just all well the post credit scene obviously would be hunted in some way but let's let's just leave that <laughs> out let's just yeah. leave that out <laughs> okay but how does that tie into your like narrative it, oh, oh, about, right, about, about Katie and choking because at the cool. end at the end it was all Hunden's plot they were like and now we can reveal the force that allows us to win each emerges like fucking Palpatine like yes yes Katie and now we can reveal ourselves to the Astralis like yeah then he comes Kadian, out and Katie has such main character energy that he does. Like, in, in <laughs> March <laughs> on March when it's women's history month they say it's not his story it's her story and then Katie looks a woman dead in the eye and says god damn it no it's my story exactly, <laughs> exactly. yeah it's uh, bad in it because yeah. he just does like like that's the problem i always have lon is i can't get into cheering for him because it's like you're just making this about you though that's so wild like and the rest of your team's mad humble like if their whole shit was like you know we, like his speech is like we win as a team we lose a team and he, <laughs> then he just comes yeah. out it's like it's all me it was all me after all in the I end it was me I, I think it was you couldn't really hear it as much on the stream but i think the first time they came through for the last fall finals like right after all that shit happened and then like walked out on stage astralis were there the most lovable team in denmark and then they just got i didn't hear i didn't hear any cheering at all for heroic and that's the first time i've heard such a one-sided crowd even compared to rio with some of them with the like booing it was so loud was against wanted. heroic we just because astralis existed and i just remember thinking like this is literally like like just poor stone stone is like walking on stage right now like i don't think anyone even hates him no, but exactly. he's just in the point he's just the point where he just believes it that everyone hates him you know and i was like this has got to be working against him a little bit like i think Cadian tells him like this energy is good like at least you're talking about us whereas i think there's like Stown and like Shuz are just like, I just wish they didn't care, you know? And I wonder if everyone was, I always wondered if everyone was on the same page as Katie in terms of how much energy he wanted out of everybody else. Going into his villain era. Yeah, because like you look at look at like Snappy's teams, they cultivate like a quiet atmosphere, right? Like they don't want any kind of people, emotions one way or the other. They want to stay like stable and consistent and that works for them. And it feels like that actually would be most of the players on Heroic, if not for Kadian by himself. Also, by the way, just as an aside, because you have to think through all the narratives. 
Think how mad this would be. It would actually make all of us have one of the worst takes of all time. Because when okay. we all saw those Copenhagen Flames runs where they were making top eight and all these majors, you were like, well, that's a big fluke. They'll never do anything. Imagine Yabby just wins the last major. Like, peace, motherfucker. I'm out. Oh, that Nico guy, you all said never won. I'm out. I win. I win, Nico. I win. Like, because yeah. this the he thing. He actually be... has been a half decent player. Like, hasn't he gotten better? Like, every month he's been on a he's rock a at this mo- point. He's the time. most improved player in 2023. And, uh, For no the reason. Re- and the biggest player in those big ma- in the finals, even though they lose. So absolutely. And uh, yeah, Stown, I mean, I love Stown, but honestly, man, like the more you watch Stown, he just misses more than most. Like the sad part is that he's actually so good. He has more opportunities to get even better stats, even though stats are year over year, like the best on heroics. But like that could easily change with Diaby, who just doesn't miss as much as him and doesn't seem to be having any problems getting better and better. And it, I love Diaby's kind of character development because he started out at Cologne, in 2022 one of the worst tournaments like you know everyone's fucking seemed to have a honeymoon except for jabby and then throughout the year just consistently got better which speaks to how how he's improved in that system and actually like learn how to play within it and not just been like selfish at first then you know try to play in the system then got better afterwards kind of went the right took the right way about it from the beginning and now is is the kill leader on the team is doing with a rifle he's doing nico stuff right now for heroic there's a couple of teams also this is a, another separate discussion is kind of like not looking at actually winning at all but the vindication <laughs> they would find if they were able to just get like a, a cheeky top four or something like that there's a few out there that are just kind of interesting like okay like nip for example is kind of on the rise and there's like there's so much to earn for say like a few of these basically everybody that's not named Hedrick, the careers that they've had have left so much to be desired that if all of them kind of came together for this one and say made it to top four think of all the blame that alexi b has received over the last three years like like fraudulent in-game leader but if he's able to put this lineup which was so bad when they were coming out when they were first playing um, what was it like the ESL Pro League? Like they they lost a zero zero nation in a game to just qualify to the easiest playoff run ever. Mm. Um, that would help them out immensely. Brolin is another guy where it's like so much potential. What he showed with that original Fnatic lineup. Uh, Rez on top of that we always talk about like this ghost of his past where he was able to peak like the first year of his career and just has never been anything like that since then I mean I think that would be a really cool story for them just because like like nobody's counting that on them to do anything and so but they're a team that just has a had they have a real possibility to at least make it to the legend stage and I, I wouldn't i wouldn't count them as making it to top eight but i think we have a couple slots open for who that sixth seventh and eighth team could be that sneaks in there no i actually do think by the way also if you look at nip they also do that thing where when you watch them play and they have a fundamentally bad game like hedrick's just all average roll and brez res just shit the bed on on the game when they do that you think they're another team you think right i'll better write them off then they'll just have like two or three games that are just like twice as good. Like what? Why are they just way better now? So they're another team where, yeah, like they could fuck around and just miracle make top eight and then f- just obviously they wouldn't win the quarters, but it's not impossible. They're going to be, of, 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 if you want to pick teams with high variance, this is one that you'd put in the mix, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think Alexi is just, he's a good IGL, but he's not great. And I think that he's always been held to a great IGL standards, but the reality is he's sort of like at an exa level, I guess, maybe like a little bit below that or something like that. And Ultimately, sort of like there are just the A plus IGLs are just so important right now that it just creates such a like a cavernous gap between him and his competition or like who's holding him out of playoffs that I think there is light to be shown back on Alexi. Um, and I think that like the lineup he has right now, like he's pretty much the worst player on the team and individually, but can also have pop off games. So that's like a pretty good sign considering the players around him. But that also puts the onus back on him, I think, to like deliver better results. So I think yeah, that, that would recuse them a lot of, of the. Uh, criticisms of this past couple of years since was it the Cato 2019 finals that he was in like that would kind of bring him back to be like okay he's actually worth you know having lead some of the better Swedish players or the best Swedish players at the moment to give them a chance um, at the end of CSGO uh, but I think the criticism goes to Alexi you know if this doesn't work out yeah another another conversation could also open up is like there's been the discussion lately is like K Serato versus Cold Zera, best Brazilian player of all time. Uh, and I think that if they're able to have a mirror, I, the thing is that I think that Cold Zera was just so damn good at his peak. It's really difficult to actually consider K Serato in the same breath without 
I mean, he doesn't have a number one. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want an event. He hasn't. Yeah, they don't have an S tier trophy. Uh, There's so many reasons why you couldn't put uh, K Serato up there. But in terms of what we know, he's delivering right now. Like, if you put K if you put the K Serato of today in all of Cold Zero spots of 2015, 16 SK LG, like they would be doing the same thing in my opinion like they they're I both, think that actually works yeah. a little bit against Case Serato cuz he's kind of just doing almost the exact same thing as Cold Zera uh, but Cold Zera provided like st- even even individually top 1 twice is is it big I will just throw this out there Cold Zera yeah. did have fucking veteran FNX winning every clutch Fur probably one of the best entry players ever also amazing longevity in his career Fallen was an IGL and Orpa and a, among the candidate for best at both yeah like yeah, yeah. Am I missing sense. something? Is it, I'm looking yeah. at the rest of Fury here, mate. Like, I've got fucking Arts and then fucking Safe does nothing. Like, mate, these aren't really like Prime Fallen and fucking Fur, are they? You know what I mean? Like, give me a break. Like, so I, there is that as well. I do think his team is way worse than the Cold Zero teams. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. So well, well, it's, it's a tough he, convo. Yeah, did he get top? He got top 20, right? Cold, case right oh, yeah, he'll have had it last top, year. I would guess oh, he last, got top nine last year. Yeah, yeah that's I, I would really guess good, maybe yeah. he also got top 20 the one before. It's, it's not impossible. Like, obviously, they were really good in the he online was, era. If he you was remember. top 23 times. He was yeah, top yeah there you go. Yeah, 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 makes sense. The thing yeah. with me is the reason why I find that convo interesting is like, I can totally sit, like, I would probably edge towards Colds if we're talking about whole career, obviously. Yeah. But if you want to do just an eye test, that's where it's interesting. Because I think the eye test goes to Kiss or It looks fucking unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, no, well, that's what I'm... the game's way harder now. That's for sure. But yeah, I yeah. think the modern players are just more skilled. Honestly, like it's just that's what that's what seven thousand more hours in the game does for you over that period. Yeah, that that's... period of time. Yeah, that's the tough. Part. It's why I even think like stats themselves that don't always purely correlate with things like aim, because obviously, like for example, like lurkers can have the drop on you and always have the info and less health on the guy. And, you know, so every kill isn't a kill. But like when you watch someone like Serato, I always think like. Why do I hear all these convos about like 50 players who I'm told have amazing aim? Mate, Case Rato has better aim than like 48 of them. Right. What, what are you talking he gets about? Amazing like, kills every it's, round. Yeah, it's bonkers how good this guy's aim is. Yeah. It's like, like, because here's the thing other players have a round when they do that. Like, this is the guy to get a POV from, guys. Go on YouTube right now and type Case Rato POV. Get any game where he has like 25 kills. Or like, you are going to be like, wait a minute. Why did no one tell me this guy is like a top four aimer in the world or something? Like he's un- he's unbelievably good yeah. at him. It's I mean, fucking the, mental. The whole he has way the best that timing period, probably. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole way they play Anubis is based off the fact that they just imagine that he's going to get two, three kills every single time when he's defending A. Like I don't. No other team plays their CT side like Furia just because they know they can leave him on the most isolated island possible, and he's still going to actually make the retake possible for them. Yeah, his sense for where people are is just fucked. Like he, it's like it. I don't know. It's no stupid. It's no stupider analogy, but it just sounds like it feels like he has X-ray on, like the way that he plays, because he's just so good at knowing where his back is, how close they might be, his timing when he turns around. Somebody made a video of like a huge flank that was coming in case Rada holding one angle from like uh, B Market on Mirage holding the get right pillar, and a guy jumps cat goes through the window and then comes in right behind him, and right before he turns from the door, Case Rado turns at the exact same time right. and just speaks to Case Rado's timing. It's like unbelievable. But in the same way, I got that same feeling watching, uh, you know, Cold Zera during his prime. I did get that same like, wow, lots of magical kills happen, three K spray downs all the time. Like, I did get that same same quality. I, I would say. All I'm gonna say is this: like, you guys have put out some interesting angles. All I want to happen is this: Vitality wins the major against Navi and Simple, who play amazing. But then, as they go to lift the trophy. Apex pulls off a flesh like a, f- a flesh like Mission Impossible Two style mask. Its existence. Then Z will pulls off his mask. It's Kenny S. <laughs> and Sphinx pulls off his. It's Fox. And basically, it was just my <laughs> narrative all along. That's how CS:GO ends. I was the one controlling the simulation. It was all a fucking long con, and they win at the end. And then they just go, "Where are you at now, Nip?" At which point, a fan turns to another fan and goes, why is he talking about that Lexi Beef team? They're not, they're not even good. And then CS just ends. Because that's how it just ended. No one remembered the history. Urgence. No one remembered all the shit at the beginning. All the great players, you're all forgotten, unless you're in the show match. At which point in time, let's be real, the show match will probably just be the broadcaster just fellating fucking fall and like every other show match for the last two years. Because you're all going to pretend, like when I said that line, I almost didn't call that like, except for the C9 game, I think Imperials had like the worst results ever possible by like any pro team ever. But let's all just pretend that's not true. And Thorin's just silly and actually Fallen's great now. 
It's brilliant, isn't it? I mean, it's coming last at every tournament. So EG exists, brilliant. man. EG yeah, it's true. <laughs> if they're but for the grace of God, yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's always EG. That's to be fair. That's probably what Imperial tell themselves before they go to sleep at night. Isn't it? It's like you know what? <laughs> Sometimes I feel pretty worthless. Do I deserve my check? But then I see Breeze. Well, you know what? Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. No, you've, you've nailed it, Lawrence. It's like the old saying, you don't have to be able to outrun a lion. You just have to be able to outrun the guy next to you. So, the last so, guy, yeah. so as long as we all the EGs get eaten by the lion, so no problem. 